Wow, that's like an abrupt start. <laughs> After all the awesome music playing, and then it just goes to silence. Let me make sure I'm recording this off of OBS so I don't lose it. Can't trust, can't trust uh, Twitch anymore. They've been fucking me over for years now. Oh, the background changed. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Huh. What's the last time I touched this fucking game? <laughs> Let's see. Load game. We got dates on here. Oh. February? Episode 4. Episode 4? Wait, we're on episode 4? I thought we were on episode 3. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, hold up. Hmm. This is the autosave. Huh. So this was this is where we last left off, I guess. Jesus. Alright. I'll just click on continue. I think that'll be the safest way to do this. Um, so hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, man machine, everything that lies in between. To more great ace attorney chronicles. The first game, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the subtitle is for it, but it's the first game, right? We haven't played this since apparently February, which isn't that far, honestly. It isn't that long. It wasn't as long as I expected since the last time we played this. So you're telling me like, what, three months, right? Three months, yeah, about three months since we've touched this, you know, for us to finish up Persona 4. Huh. And on top of that, Kingdom Hearts 1, so it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't that long. Jesus. For some reason, it felt longer. It felt like I haven't touched this since, since December or something like that. Okay. Well, anyways, we're back with more Great Ace Attorney. Where we last left off, I remember that we had to, uh be the defendant to a Japanese man, right? Because apparently he was framed for murder. Murder in like, just, just like, just in plain day, middle of the street on his way back home from a bookstore, I believe. And then we, I don't think we even got any like solid evidence. We, all we did was like talk to, talk to like the, the landlord of the estate, estate, what am I saying? Landlord of the apartment, right? Talk to him and his maid, who was actually his wife, who was like just kicking his ass the whole entire time. <laughs> Man had like a red slap mark across his face, right? I don't think we got any like crazy evidence, like decisive evidence, if I remember. We just kind of fucked around. And now we have to stand trial. Huh. I have no idea where this is gonna go. Jesus. Anyways, before we get started, just wanna say couple of things one I'm gonna be taking I'm probably gonna be taking some breaks here and there right throughout this uh, session mainly because mainly because one reason I ate a whole fucking watermelon today by myself because it was going bad and nobody well I think it was gonna go bad and nobody wanted to fucking partake right despite the fact that they were the people who opened it to begin with so I said fuck it I hate wasting food I'm just gonna eat a whole entire watermelon to myself and I did that so Chances are I'm going to have to be taking some bathroom breaks because, you know, it's called watermelon for a reason. There's a lot of water in that. Other reasons is, um, it, it's fucking, it's, you know, it's Ace Attorney. So my voice is probably going to hurt within, like, I don't know, 20 minutes after we start this shit. And then the third reason, I don't know. I don't know. I forgot. I forgot. Probably just, like, drink some water or something drink more water, get more water in my system so my throat doesn't hurt anymore. But without further ado, let's get back into the Grace Ace Attorney. Grace Ace Attorney, Jesus, I already can't fucking speak. I hate these games. Anyways, let's go. Let's get started. Let's do this. I should actually be checking the, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, no, definitely. I'm looking at the uh, audio right now. It seems a little loud. <laughs> it seems a little loud. I'm going to lower that. I'm gonna lower that by like one decimal. All right. <clears throat> it's been a while since I had to speak this much. 
and I'm nervous as hell. Can't wait to start fucking up some words. Here we go. 20th of February, 9.23 a.m. The Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Well, I never expected this. Who would have thought that we'd be... I already fucked up. Who would have thought that we'd be back here soon? We are on a study tour for Great Bear. Eh. Fuck. <laughs> I already fucked up my words. We are on a study tour of Great Britain with the intentions of learning the country's legal procedures. Procedures? Practices? I keep adding my own words. In order to research the latest court procedures. And now we use the word procedures. All right, fuck you, Susato. Uh, we need as much court experience as possible. Well, yes, I suppose that's true, but... For the person in the dock, it may well be his or her own and only time in court. And it could be life-changing. In which case, treating it as research may seem a little crass. Oh, when you put it like that, you're quite right. Good morning. Ooh, a good morning to you, sir. Ah, Mr. Natsume, didn't you go bankrupt and now Marvelous owns Room Factory? <laughs> good morning! Oh dear, are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. Oh, fine, young lady. I just have been smoking that ranky dank, if you know what I'm talking about. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Yes, I've heard that expression. But I really don't want to catch a worm. So I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't watch a wink. Watch a wink. Catch a wink. <laughs> watch a wink. And now, I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do all literary, uh, liter uh, fuck. Do all literary people take things so literally? Thank you for putting your fate into us today, Mr. Natsume. What's the matter, Soseki? Don't worry, we have no evidence to support your uh <laughs> your defense. What do I have? I have a street map <laughs> and a receipt discovered. In Mr. Nodsman's room for some books. Yeah. That's pretty much it. That's all the evidence we got. I wish I had nine lives. My whole future hang in the balance. I'm too terrified to tremble. But you're doing it. Really? Because I can feel tremors in the floor. I can't do this. I can't take it. Although, locum student... Lo locum? Yeah. Locum student Mr. Narohodo Esquire... Um, yeah? I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looked like the opening night of the opera. There were so many people. I had no idea my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Oh, um, well, neither did I. Do you know why that might be, Mrs. Sato? I'm sorry, Mr. Nadhoto, but I got no idea. So... That all-knowing look on your face is just coincidence then, huh? Look at that confidence she got! Don't hide the truth from me. It's... It's... It's because of the Reaper, isn't it? Lord Von Zykes? Lord Von Zykes? Is... Is that right, Mrs. Sato? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning, and yeah... Lord Van Zykes is on the front page of every one. I knew it. Sometime after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey. He stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now. In fact, until the day before yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gregson. Gregson? Oh yeah, Scotland Yard. Inspector Gregson told us something familiar, didn't he? The trial two days ago marked Lord Van Zyke's return to the courtroom after a long, after a very long hiatus. Whoa, hold up. What the hell happened to my feed? Uh, whoa, alright, give me a moment here. For some reason. There we go. I'm looking at the stream and it's like, it's like, don't worry, you're streaming. But then I'm looking at my feed and it's like, oh no, no, you're not. I got two things telling me two different things. But apparently it's all good. It's going to be all good anyways because I'm recording it. The trial of Magnus McGilded. 
McGuild? Yeah, McGuild. Ah, uh, what a harrowing experience that was. I believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today. But we wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey soon, so soon? For what appears to be a mundane murder. And that's the question the papers are asking, and they are all suspecting various answers. Mundane! Mundane! It's the most significant saga of the century to, uh, to some of us. Oh dear! I meant not to offend, Mr. Natsume, but that is how the papers are describing it. Well, lest we also forget the fact that it could spark an international incident. Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. But there's another blatant similar, sim eh, can't speak. similarity with the trials of two days ago. Yes, I agree. Locum student Mr. Narahuro Esquire, it's you. Me? Well, I suppose that is true. Both times, is it you who stands against the legendary prosecutor? It, it can only mean that you're friends with the Reaper. Please, interrupt shoulders with, with Deathbringers. I'm afraid that there's really only one other explanation. It can only be another example. Wait, what? It can only be an, yeah, I read that right. It can only be another example, Mr. Narahoro, of your un, of your uncommon bad luck. You guys are assholes. Thanks for that. Oh, this is just my luck. Why must I rep be represented by a man with such frail fortune? By the least lucky lawyer alive! Well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsume, who asked me to represent you. Yes, it's true that I am just a student, new to London, with little in the way of experience or skills or even luck. But I promise you this, I will fight in your corner until bi the bitter end, and I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Narahoro Esquire. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be by your side. Oh, benevolent non-locum assistant, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Miss Mikotoba Esquire. <laughs> I am in your debt, forever! I shall never forget this great kind- Oh, damn it. <laughs> Mr. Natsume, counsel for the defense. I have a name. The court session is about to begin. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. All right then, Mr. Natsume. It's time. Let's go. <laughs> yes! Time to bullshit my way through a trial. And this is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom. And my second trial against the Reaper. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because this time, I won't let my faith waver. Wait, waver? I won't let my faith waver. I'll believe in my client to the last. Just like you believed in me. My man died before he can even get here. Jesus! <laughs> I believe I can do this. I'm ready for this fight. <laughs> like, not even not even one trial to hang out with me, like in the new world. Oh, I, oh boy, I can't wait to get to the new world. Dead. Dead by some bullshit. 20th of February, 10 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. <clears throat> Is that a new jury? In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, <laughs> in the name of the Majesty, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution in defense to declare their willingness to proceed. That is fucking Alucard motherfucker. All right, the prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. You, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. The Nipponese are a truly fascinating breed. 
Sorry? What? <laughs> like, for real? What? Lord Strongheart has told me all about- I for fucking forgot about Strongheart, Jesus Christ. Has told me all about you. That you are a student who arrived in London, but two days ago, a mere amateur. Do- do you have a point? Being a compatriot, you feel compelled to try to help the- the, uh, the accused. I suppose typical Nipponese ignorance. You guys are just super racist. Forgive me, but I do not believe ignorance is an appropriate description. This is After all, at our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. Where did you get- Alright. Alright. Very true. And a most fascinating, if dark, trial it was too. That trial was fucking long for no reason. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. Here to the acquitted and his unfortunate violent end. Thank you, counsels. I see both sides are in fine fiddle. Hey, fiddle diddle, soft my riddle. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Are you ready to carry out your duties here in the court as imperial members of, of the imperial impartial members of the public? <laughs> you know, ah, fucking Christ! This guy's on the jury. Damn it! Well, we're fucked. You never know when you might be down on your luck, but I believe in fair play for everyone. Well, I must warn you, I'm rather more ruthless than I appear. Oh my fucking god, this guy's on it too? This is the same guy, right? No, this is a different guy, he just looks alike. Or maybe it is the same guy, but he but he got he got drip when we walked away. Oh well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fellow. I'm afraid to say I think it's quite possible that Mustache Foreigner did the deed. Really? Come on, lady. She, she's she's too close to this trial. She can't be here. Oh, look at this guy. Come on. What are we waiting for? No doubt he did it anyways. Eh? Sorry. Didn't quite catch that. I can't hear shit. For some reason, they put me on the jury. Very well. Let us proceed. Your opening statement, if you please, Lord Von Zykes. Lord Von Zoinks? Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with the rising powers in the Far East. The accused in the dock today is a student from that same land, a certain Mr. Soseki Natsume. And, while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, except for the mass racism that you guys keep throwing, regrettably, the kindness has not been returned. In fact, the student is accused of most sinister acts. That was so fucking unnecessary. What the hell, man? <laughs> a plunge and a knife into the back of an innocent woman who was doing nothing but walking down the street. A knife crime? I love knife culture. <laughs> I tell you from the bitter experience, those are the worst. Bloody oath they are. Just look at the swallow... Swallow? Swallow? Okay, just look at the swallow complexion and short stature. He, wow, that's fucked up. <laughs> He's one of those dreadful Japanese- OH MY GOD! He just straight up put a racist on the fuck- Alright, whatever. Come on, let us get over with. With me now, everyone. One, two, three! Eh? Sorry. Didn't quite catch that. Pray. We'll give the discourtesy of smashing my hollow chalice here in the great chamber and almost bar burning all of you to the fucking ground. Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. Very well. Bailiff, lead the inspector in, please. Inspector, go, go, gadget. Your name and occupation, please. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at, at Scotland Yard. Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court, Inspector? 
The victim is thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Green. I beg your pardon, Inspector. Thought to be? Yes. Having been stabbed in the back by her attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now. And she's been comatose ever since. Oh shit. What? They don't even know who she is for sure? Hmm. Comatose. I see. Well, her life is not in danger. Fortunately, for the Easterner student, the charge will not be murder. Pray elaborate on the details, Inspector. Sir, if I could ask everyone to look at the street map. If I can ask everybody to check these fucking streets. As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago, at around five in the afternoon. It happened on the pavement running along Briar, 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 Briar Road, a wide a ride thoroughfare of horse-drawn vehicles. Thoroughfare? Thoroughfare? I don't fucking know. It had not long since stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, was walking down the street. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accur- by- I keep wanting to say accursed. Accused and, and stabbed in the back. Why I gotta put a fucking shady ass picture of him? His eyes are all darkened and shit, making him look like the fucking... I don't know, making him look like a fucking miscreant. <laughs> Wait, come on. Luckily the, long, uh, luckily, the young lady's life was spared, and she's currently being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But being unconscious as she is, we've been unable to take a statement from her, of course. This is the case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept this document as evidence, if you please. The case file has been added. I would love to see that case file, if you, if you will let me, please. All right. <clears throat> Details, young woman rendered unconscious following a stab wound to the back. Fucking just ugh, shanked her. Victim, olive green, female, stout built, early 20s. Location, pavement of Briar Road, east side. All the way from the east side, we're not talking about the west side. You know, <laughs> reporting officer, royally, uh, royally, Ryle, Royal? Royal? What the fuck? Raleigh? I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Raleigh Beat? Royal Beat? Raleigh Beat? Something like that. The victim remains unconscious. Her name is gleamed from her personal effects. Other details are unknown, apart from a single stab wound from a large knife. Uh, no other signs of injury was observed. The assailant was seen running away by the reported officer and was successfully arrested the following day. Okay. What of the weapon that was used? Sir, I have it here. It was removed from the victim's back. Ouch. That big thing is starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. Hey, Ryonosuke. Why don't you fucking walk over to my hood? See what happens. <laughs> like, come on. With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to stab the poor woman. With a heavy... Wait, heavy... What is it? Heavy blade or heavy... Did I read that right? I totally didn't, did I? What'd she say, heavy build? No, heavy blade, yeah, I did read that. What the fuck? With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to say, oh yeah, okay, yeah, you wouldn't have to put that much force because the knife is heavy. I, I get what you're saying. Even the scragged look, even the scraggle, fuck. Scragged, scrag, scragged, scrag, what the fuck is that word? Scraggly, even the scraggly looking soseki sound, I suppose. Hmm, scrag. That sounds, that sounds like a, like a term you shouldn't be using. <laughs> All these fucking scrags out here. <laughs> like, no, don't do that. Hmm, a common or garden jackknife, I would say. Rather not jack, okay, yeah. Rather nondescript. Thank you, Inspector. The court accepts the blade as evidence. The jackknife has been entered into the court records. Now then, what do we know of the motive? Money or valuables, I presume? From what we can tell by the look of the woman's possessions, it seems that she was a poor student herself. So, so poor, with so, so little money. <laughs> Hard to imagine she would have had anything much worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep-seated resentment towards the victim? I'm afraid I couldn't say. Apart from visiting second-hand bookshops, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, doesn't appear to get out much. At this moment in life, 
uh, what? At this moment in time, did I just, what the fuck is wrong with me? It doesn't even say that. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. Yes! Yes! Sound like Todd Snap. If, <laughs> raising my fucking hand. If theft and, and a grievance, grievance, grievance? Grievance, yeah? Grievance? <laughs> Can you tell that I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not good at reading? <laughs> If that thing grievous has been ruled out of as the motion at the mo fuck as the motive What reason could mr. Knotts may possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Yet you arrested the man in spite of that in a total unjustified and heavy-handed way Objection. What the fuck You just you just threw he literally just threw it in the fucking like in in the goddamn audience Someone is bleeding back there. Or covered in wine, at least. Pray I forgive the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncorked bottle into the- Oh, it was uncorked too, so it just splashed everywhere? <laughs> but your words have, words have soured its hollow banquet. For it is you who, who learned- my, Wow. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed to you. What? Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Inspector Gregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the con constabulary constabulary yeah constabulary came to the, to the arrest of Nipponese student. Yes, sir. Indubitably, sir. Witness testimony. Let's hear it. Mr. Natsume's rest. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else about, about but the victim and the accused. J accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequent, uh, subsu uh, subsu mm, subsequently, Jesus, <laughs> collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he just bought, he was on his way home from the bookshop, it seems. It was just a matter of working out who the book belonged to, and we found the bloke to arrest him. We found the bloke to arrest Yeah, we found the bloke to arrest Why does it sound like I'm not reading it right? Because I'm not. <laughs> old books, you say? Yes, my lord. I have, a, I have a photograph here of the scene of the crime, taken immediately after the incident. Damn, she folded like a deck of cards. Alright. Ah oh, yes, you can clearly see the books to which you are referring. That lady is shaped like an onion. Like even her haircut. <laughs> but her name's Olive Green. <laughs> I will take the photographic prints as evidence. Please, Inspector. The crime scene photo has been added to the court record. Thank you. You Nipponese are a spineless breed, too cowardly to admit defeat. What the fuck? All right, wait, what? <laughs> spineless, but you're too cowardly to admit defeat. How that? What them? Mm, all right, don't make sense, but okay. Dying everything despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Well, I will. Uh... Forgive me, Lord Von Zykes, but the defendant is not denying anything, as you put it. What are you doing, Mr. Sato? I don't know, Rianosuke, looks like she's doing my fucking job. <laughs> Do go on. Mr. Natsume has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Nathoro? Well, now that you mention it. When we visited him in the prison yesterday, he did tell us he, uh, what had happened. Listen, what had happened was, as I was walking along the accursed bay, uh, fuck curse. Accused pavement, I can make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman, wearing a green overcoat, she was, just as I went to overtake her. She suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold hard sla- Why is there no blood coming from the wound? There's an absence of blood. Okay. Uh, the cold hard slabs of stone at my feet. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran. I ran as fast as I can. They can't catch me. I'm the Nipponese man. <laughs> as fast as my legs would carry me back to my 
accused, accursed. It is accursed, but they put those words around too much for me. Accursed lodgings. Hmm. A green overcoat. Well, that's exactly what the woman in the print is wearing. Oh my, a photographic print in full color. What will the world come up with next? Really? You show her a picture of like, uh, you know, a brutal stabbing, and she's all like, Oh my, look at all the colors, so beautiful. The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of the terrifying incident. That does not mean that he is guilty of this heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time, and just the two of them, the victim and the accused. Literally, all you have to do is add an R in the word accused, and it turns into a curse. <laughs> a curse. <laughs> That's why I get so fucked up. In other words, there's nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. The fact that the accused concedes. Uh, Jesus. Hmm. Seems this cross-examination could prove to be pivotal, counsel. Proceed, please. Oh, I shall. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use the cross-examination to turn the tables here. It's our only chance. Or you can just pull out this fucking 25. <laughs> just start blasting. Alrighty, then. How do I, uh... Gotta remember, you gotta save before each and every one. Now, where the fuck was my last save at, by the way? Was it... Up here, no. Or was it? Oh, I guess this was it, number four. Well then, overdoing number five. There we go, overwrite that shit. Alrighty. <clears throat> Let's see what we're working with here. I find it strange that there's like zero blood in this picture. But, you know. Let's check the knife, actually. Can we open this bad boy up? Okay, it's chipped off. That's crazy. Huh. It's chipped off at the tip. And there's no blood on the knife whatsoever. That's interesting. Can't find anything out of place. What the fuck are you talking about? Can't- what? Oh, I pressed the wrong button. I forgot, I'm playing this on fucking- ah, Damn it. <laughs> I pressed the A button like it was goddamn, um... X button. Okay. Wait, can I, can I not examine it? What, what are we doing here? Examine the tip there. There we go. Oh, look here, Mr. Narahodo. Just at the tip. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right. Well spotted, Mrs. Sato. I wonder what could have happened to it. Yes. You? You don't think... It could still be lodged in the victim, do you? Oh dear. I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. Okay, can we not make note of the lack of blood on this fucking knife? Stop closing it, damn it. <laughs> Stop closing it. Maybe if I inspect the handle instead. No? Really? Can I not, like, make note? Okay, whatever. I also want to see this. Oh, you can't, all right, you can't examine the photo like you can, all right. It's been a while since I played it. So, receipts discovered. Sums of two shillings. Tinder the receipt of the picture, blah, 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 meal. Okay. 17th of February. 17th, and this is, is there a date on this one? Victim remains unconscious, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Street map. And that's where the incident happened. Alright. Gotcha. And my armband. Okay. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was usually lightly fog. Visibility is reasonably great, and there was no one else but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed. By the way, let me just. I'm gonna check. <clears throat> 
peoples of interest. How, how do I switch from that? It's been a while. Present. How do I switch from... Well, I guess people aren't important here, so it's only evidence. Alright, cool. Out of blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and collapsed at the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he had just bought. Uh, on his way home from the bookshop, it seems. It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found the bloke and arrested him. And that's the last one. Now, can I make out the books that are... Nope. You can't. Alright. Yeah, you can't. Alright, cool. Alright, just checking. Hmm. Well, and of all books you had just bought, can you tell me what books they were? The defendant appear, uh, apparently visits a secondhand bookshop on a daily basis. Yes, so I understand. A shop full of old English literature. I commend the accused of the lofty subject matter of his scholarly scholar, scholar, scholar attention. The bloke rooms were stacked floor to the ceiling with the musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Well, if I must. I'll have to ask you to look at the street map again, I'm afraid. Okay. The closest secondhand bookshop to the accused lodgings is in this place here, Bourbon Books. A little place on the corner of Briar Road and Mir Mir I am not gonna fucking say that. <laughs> As it happens, the accused is currently living in the lodgings on the other side of Briar Road, the opposite side, which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route he was taking home. All right. Cool. Something like this. Hmm. Yes, I concur with your conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have passed the scene of the crime on his way home from that peculiar shop. Mr. Narhoda, I think that was the inspect I think what the inspector just told us could turn out to be of vital importance. Yes, I do agree with that. The most important point that the inspector just made being uh the bookshop stock, the bookshop's name, the bookshop's location. Crucial detail is what you just told the court inspectors, the location of the bookshop. I couldn't agree more. So, where is it exactly? Eh? Are you, are you winding me up, Sunshine? I just explained that. I got the map out and everything. Use red, bloom, and ink and draw the bloke's route home for you. And I distinctly remember seeing you nod along, Council. Oh, yeah, of course. I must have been so nervous I didn't take it in. The blunder of the day is gone. By. <laughs> the blunder of the day goes to you, my learned friend. No, not yet. The trial's only just the beginning, after all. Mr. Narahoto, I strongly advise you to look carefully through the court record at this stage. Yes, miss. At once. Sorry, I made a mistake. Inspector, continue with your testimony, please. Well, give me a fucking moment to look at it, alright? Damn, instead of everybody getting on my ass about it. Where's the map? Here's the map. Okay. So, bookstore is right here. His lodgings are here. Yeah, he could have just flomp, flomp. Or he could have just flomp, flomp. Or he could have just flomp, for da 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 da. <laughs> alright. Hmm. Matter of working the books, belong to him, found him. Okay. Hughes ran off, scattered his belongings all over the floor. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind. Visibly really reasonably good, and there was no one else about but the victim. As I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred. Okay. Let me check the receipt. Does it say what time he bought it? All right. Okay, 4.45. So literally just five minutes. All right. I 
actually want to press him again. Yeah, I'm gonna press him again on this. Because it seems like they were trying to fucking get at something for a hot moment. Okay. Take hand both the accused lodgings. Okay. We'll place on the corner. Mm hmm. Something like this. Yes, I concur. Alright, so what the hell are you getting at, Sasato? The name? Bookshop Stock. Let's see. I might be I might be barking up the wrong tree right here. Well I must ask you to look at the street map, closest secondhand book. The closest secondhand bookshop. The accused lodgings, this place here, Burner's book. A little piece on the corner, Briar Road, Street, Mr. Happenings, currently living in lodgings on the other side at the opposite end. Which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route he would have taken home, something like this. Okay, I don't see why the name is important. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait, hold up. Oh! <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 it's the name. Thank you. Inspector Gregson, may I ask you a favor? What? Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your final, uh, final formal testimony, please? I believe it may have been vital of importance. Maybe. Oh, well, you know. I mean, yes. It could be very important. Very well. Not that I can see it being of any great significance. But please revise your testimony accordingly, Inspector. Yes, sir, my lord. Whatever you say. Could that man be any more star... star what? Sardonic? Sardonic. Sardonic? That's a word I've never fucking heard before. Alright! Fucking hold it! Oh, what button is it? Objection! Objection, bitch! Um, if... If I could just stop you there, Inspector. What is it, Sunshine? I'm a busy man, you know. This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsume's room. It was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of three secondhand books. And you found that in the accused room, didn't you? Yes. But the point is not where the receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. This receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Your Books? Y O E R, I presume. Yes, my lord. So, Mr. Natsume did indeed purchase a number of books at a second-hand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh? What? Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Yes, sir. Your books is another second-hand shop not far from Bourbon Books. It's just that. Well, it's such a small place, I... I didn't think the accused would have known about it. Objection. But the fact is that the bookshop which the defendant visited on the day in question, and this receipt proves it. Objection. Sit down, man. Yes. For what difference it makes. Remember the man purchased his musty tomes is wow, you really gotta hit him like that? Alright, cool. It must <laughs> it makes no difference in the final analysis. Objection. I disagree. I mean, after all, um, I have the street map here, if that might help. Oh, yeah, thank you. Have a look at this, please. The defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books. Then yes, he would almost certainly have passed the place where Miss Green was attacked. However, 
if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, Your Books. It may very well turn out that he wouldn't have passed the location at all. <gasps> Could that be true? My, my. It rather depends on where the other bookshop is, but I do declare it may be a possibility. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said? Absolutely. It absolutely could be right. Oh, now I got the court fucking riled up. Inspector Gregson, where is your books? I don't know. I don't read. Well, uh, obviously we looked into that. Watch it be like around the same area. It turns out your books. It's just here on the next corner of whatever street. The location, uh, the location's map information has been updated. And there you have it, as you can clearly see now. That really doesn't prove shit. <laughs> like, oh. Just gonna get another bottle of wine. My learning bunny's friends is obviously in training. <laughs> He's obviously training to be a clown. Nay, the whole fucking circus. The way he re <laughs> regales us with such wins. Oh, God. Win, win, winism? Wittyism? Fuck, that is a word. To your future career in the circus. <laughs> now she's fucking growling like a dog. You put that glass down now, or I'll put it down for you. Jesus! I, uh... Didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. The accused was coming from your books instead of bourbon books. Same fucking difference. There's no doubt he still would have passed the place where the victim was stabbed. Maybe he won't take the other fucking way. Yes, thank you, Inspector. Uh. Allow me to... Uh, re reiterate for my learnt for for my learnt. What the fuck? What is this language you guys are using? It's not English. <laughs> it's British English. Oh, poppycock and all this other bullshit. If somehow slow, <laughs> my learnt if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. You're so fucking destructive for no reason. You might as well just take a gun out and start shooting it. <laughs> wherever the man purchases, uh, whatever the man purchases, his musty tomes makes no difference in the final analysis. And now I'm dead. He did shoot me. He did pull out a gun. As I suspected, you can't fool me, and I do not suggest you try. Oh my God, this man's squaring up. Jesus. <laughs> what I say, eh? I've had enough about this now. Beg your pardon. I'm terribly sorry. Would you mind repeating that? Mr. Narahoda. Can you just call me Ryunosuke? Can you just call me Ryu or some bullshit? So I can just yell fucking Hadouken <laughs> over and over. <laughs> we mustn't give up. What? What do you mean? If the prosecution as <clears throat> If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the member of the jury may very well decide that Mr. Natsume is guilty. She's absolutely right. We must think. You must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. The claim Soseki-san must have passed the location from the incident on its way home from yours book, but... I OBJECT! The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Oh yeah? Explain yourself, counsel. Uh, yeah, my lord. <clears throat> you can see what I mean of this map. When returning from your book to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, isn't that street full of, like, horses and shit? That isn't the only conceivable route to be taken between the two places. He could have gone this way. The defendant used these streets if he lived out here in these streets. <laughs> Look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the look. That's the most like, this is the most bullshit back and forth. Like, he could have gone this way. Oh, he could have gone this way. <laughs> he 
He rides back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Objection. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand. Of course, however, I feel compelled to point out that. Wait, what? I feel compelled to point out. Yeah, okay. That that, that was worded weirdly. That route is what is commonly referred to as the long way around. I'm gonna show you the fucking long way around, alright? On a cold winter night, why would any man choose to take a long route home? Maybe he just wasn't cold. Well, uh, he likes the cold. The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't, in other words. The accused took the obvious rope back to his lodgings and is the <clears throat> and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. Fuck, I need something to drink. Objection. <laughs> I'm dying here. But, but, oh yes, I've got it. Obviously, we must ask the man himself, ask Mr. Natsume which route he took. What if he just lies? <laughs> I've already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. <laughs> oh man. That's right. As I said, the bloke seemed to... I had to yawn. Sorry about that. And the bloke seemed to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. That day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. So you're just gonna assume that he took the other route? A lot of, a lot of hearsay, don't you think? I don't believe this. I'm not Naruto. I thank you, my learned friend. And suggest that we do not waste any more of this court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray what you say, you wait. wait uh, pray what say you, insightful jurors. But, but even if that's the case, the defense still. <laughs> He's just, the dude's just like, eh, I don't care. I agree with Lord Von Zeiss. Of course you do, dickhead. Wholeheartedly, in every way. What? I don't believe it. Does this mean? We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Very well. In that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty! 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 Oh, sh... <laughs> I thought he was gonna be like, what did you say? Oh! Okay. It would appear that Jerry is leaning, uh, leaning is at, at not, uh, fuck. Unanimous. I hate that word. Come on, Cesaro, what's that stupid thing we did before? We can do it again, right? To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Mr. Narahodo. No, not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. I have to turn this around. Somehow. Hmm. Those are the eyes of Query, not yet willing to give up and die. You would know, you fucking murderer. <laughs> So I presume you intend to wield your rights against in the, uh, again in this trial. Rights of the defense written into a, a qu fuck. Mm. And 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 qu fuck. I, why can't I say the word? Damn it. <laughs> uh, equa acquainted, 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 acquainted British law. There we go. <laughs> Antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated if you will. But. It's the defense's prerogative to carry out a submission examine. Oh, wow. Submission. Some nation. Fuck! These words. <laughs> submission examination. If it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with some nation. 
Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I am all too familiar with the Nipponese whippersnapper and his and his onk onkis onkis what whatever refusal to throw in his ally ally ally, ally whatever the fuck. <laughs> Very well then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. Let me see, because that guy's an asshole, she's a racist, he just, I don't fucking know. She's trying to cover her own ass, that guy, I don't know what he's thinking, and the last dude just doesn't even know what the fuck's going on. For Pete's sake, the little Nipponese odd, oddity, <laughs> well, already admitted it himself, didn't he? If he says that the woman is green collapsed before his eyes, why, why it can only have been the victim? Wait, what? Why it can only have been the vi- What the fuck? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why can it only have been the victim? What are you fucking saying? All right. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses of it uh, on his way back from the bookshop. Not in the winter. But the poor woman who, who was attacked from behind, and she was- Oh, well, fuck, I can't even read it. <laughs> So the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I got work to be doing. Hmm, your books. Yeah, it's nice shop that. But bourbon books? Hmm, no, not worth the visit. Not at all. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you people? With only minor exceptions, the reason for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. Yeah, it's they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. When the stabbing occurred, when the moiter occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Natsume's guilt now. Why did he have to run away like that? How are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How could I possibly make a case for the defense? Mr. Narahoro, this is no time to be grumbling. If we want to force the trial to continue. Yes, I know. I have to turn the tides. I must make the jury... I must make the jurors change their mind. Well, for them, at least. Exactly. We have no choice but to, form, but to forge forward. You have the floor, Council. Begin your summation examination. Yes, my lord. Slap them cheeks. I just need to keep this trial going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryanosuke. You can do it. The defense rebuttal. Alright, so I have to pit them against each other, right? Oh, but I can also press them on the matter? It's been a while. It's been it's been three months. <laughs> if he says the woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why can it only have been the victim? Oh, why it can only ha okay, alright, now I see alright, the way it's worded it's so fucking weird. She's going if he says that the woman in the green collapse before his eyes, why, it can only be the victim, right? Okay, but that still doesn't fucking make sense. Alright, whatever. Hold it! Explain, bitch. <laughs> You're right, that at the time that of the incident, the defendant admit to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Well, quite. That's precisely my point. Clearly, that someone wearing the green was the victim. And clearly, the funny little Nipponese man with the disturbing mustache is the culprit. But let's not forget, madam, the defense, the defendant vehem, ve oh, God damn it, vehemently, that that is a word, <laughs> denies attacking the woman. Why, of course he does. If he admits to stabbing her, his life is over. The man is obviously a liver-faced coward. Honestly, claiming the woman simply collapsed before his eyes. But if that, <clears throat> but if that's a lie, as you're subjecting. 
Do you not think he could have con concocted something more credible? Oh, I really shouldn't say. After all, you are foreign and I am racist. Who's to say what goes through your funny little minds? I can tell you, <laughs> I can tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. I do declare, the man has already made uh, the ad admission. He himself has stated that there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could have come. Uh, no one else could have committed this awful crime. Ugh. If no one else could have done it, God damn it, lady, you talk too much. If no one else could have done it, the accused must have been must have been the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. The argument is compelling in the sim uh, in its simplicity. I must admit. Oh my. You are too kind, my lord. That went well for her. Jesus. The man wouldn't have gone around the uh, house. Okay, if it was not. Okay, yeah. The poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. <laughs> He's like, I just don't give a fuck. Alright. Hmm. I ran it to himself, didn't he? Alright. Trying to see if I can hit anyone against each other. So, he's going with that he admitted it. She's going that he must have done it. He's saying it's fucking cold. So he must have walked around. Goldman was attacked from behind. How dreadful. This guy's like, I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> Yours book, nice shop, yes. Hmm. You talk to me. I want to know what the fuck your story is. Hold it. Gotta send a man like to his death or some shit. Man's life is on the line here, sir. This will not take long. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line too, and so is my family's. Ah, yes. The likes of you wouldn't understand, but a lab but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat, and neither do my wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. I got the I got the union. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I go to the unit every morning to find out what needs to be doing. If you're late and the work is taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left and right, and and, cent and center. They're after cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix. It's hard slog from dawn from dawn till dusk. Okay. So, you were digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just round the corner from where it all happened. But the old bookshop, uh, by the old bookshop it was. What? No coincidence. That's right. Whatever the fuck street it was. Hmm. On the map, Mr. Nana, hold up. There are only three names on the street. Uh, three, three street names. <laughs> Juror number five. I need you to add the information to your formal statement, please. What's the point of that? Can we just get this business over with now? Please, sir. It's important. Fine. I'll do it then. On the day it happened, I was digging, blah, blah, blah. From dust till dawn. Okay. Now... Is it possible that I can have him hit it against this dude? Right? I would like to save before I try any of this bullshit. <laughs> I should do that. Before I fuck myself over. Have a flashback to the other games. Hold it! Alright, let's see. Hmm, excuse me, but uh... Aren't you? Yes, that's right. I was a witness. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I have a feeling I knew your face, or the sight of it, anyways. If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the gold rush down under, I came back to London to work, and it was all going swimmingly until you started frost frost sickening. What? Till you started frost sick frost sickening. What the fuck is that word? Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Sorry. Don't think I've forgotten. 
how you treated me the other day. You had me and the young Hatter pegged as criminals. Oh well, you know, water under the bridge. Now that's all sort of rumors buzzing around and the police have been badgering me nonstop. If I could turn back the clock. Well anyways, I don't know about the Hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. And free to make up my own mind about who's guilty and who isn't. Haha, <laughs> thank goodness. Alright, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind, given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wouldn't want to become Mr. Frost now. Okay. You, explain yourself. Hold it! But you can't deny that there are other routes Mr. Nonsmay could have taken from the your books. Oh yes, like you drew on the map, you mean? What was it? Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at the moment, there's no proof to show that he did, is there? Well, yeah, the true, uh, that's true as well. And, I, and as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. But tonight's a dark and cold, so the way I see it, you want to go home as quick as possible. Well, yes. <laughs> Why is it all so true? So, really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. I suppose be <laughs> I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I've given it a lot of thought, you know. I didn't just make up my mind on a whim. I mean, if there was some, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone, like, did, 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 did. why he might have gone the Calabash Road, uh, whatever, you know what I mean. Why he might have gone the other way, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honestly, I would. Hmm, a reason why Soseki might have taken a longer way home. Yes, a good reason. I would imagine you'll be able to sway the young man's opinion without one. Obviously! I will now pit you two against each other. I will pit you. How do I... Yeah, pit you with you. Objection. Fight! Those two statements are clearly at odds with another. At odds, Council. Explain yourself. Please don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Uh, what? I just want to get this done and dusted. Well, jury number three. Oh, me, sir? Wh what do you mean? Jury number five words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the, and on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on whatever street, making it impossible. Which means that the defendant's route home could have could have taken him along whatever street and that oh fuck, I just hit the fucking mic, Jesus, with my hand. <laughs> uh, could not have been taken along whatever fuck the street and down Briar Road. Oh yes, of course. What what do you think, sir? Well, yes. You can't argue with that, really, can you? You must have a good two yard, a good two yards or more of the pavement up. Or something I, I didn't read that right. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So the only conclusion is this: the defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. Uh, I suppose that must be right. Jury number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the house on his way back from the bookshop, but we see now that he had no choice. Yes. I am astonished. My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. Yes. I don't think it's all good I don't think in all good conscience that I can say this man is guilty now. Jury number three, you're my favorite. Yes, I'd like to see the trial continue so we can get to the bottom of what really happened. Score one for me. What about you, sir? 
Uh, who, me? Mm, well, all right then. There's, there's a hole in the prosecution's argument. It should be filled in. That's what I say. There's a lot of fire hazards in this fucking courtroom. Well done, Mr. Natahodo. That was wonderful. Well, we managed to change a couple of minds, at least. It strengthens our position somewhat. Yes. And it will prompt the other members of the jury to consider their stance as well. Be, uh, they'll be asking themselves if the culprit... Fuck. If the current leadings... <laughs> they'll be asking themselves if the current leadings are, real or, are really right or not. Now, if only... We could just identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Natsume. We might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what I've got to do. Von Zykes? Von Zoinks! Is, lo <laughs> is looking to bring the trial to a clear conclusion. That's what we have to prevent. By whatever means, we have to... Uh, by whatever means at our disposal. Thank you, counsel. On with, uh, on with the dissemination examination, please. Yes, my lord. Oh, yes, my lord. I'm actually gonna lower this a little bit more, just by like one more. There we go. There we go. Lower it a little bit more. That should be fine, right? Yeah, that should be fine. I have to say not guilty at this point. Thank you. So the poor woman was attacked from behind. Hmm. Whatever is the matter, young man? You're the wife of Mi Oh, why would you say that out loud? You're not supposed- Damn it! You're the wife of Mr. Garadep- Gary Depp? Whatever, aren't you? The landlord who runs Mr. Natsume's room? The master's wife? Where do you get that idea, sir? I'm the maid. The maid, you understand. She's keeping up the charade. This is going to be awkward. Um, why didn't you mention this earlier? That you'd be selected for jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. It was in a letter I received. The instructions were very clear, so I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyways, Mr. Natsume, the defendant takes lodgings in your... Uh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, Mr. Okay, I, th I thought he was calling her Mr. Natsume. Takes lodgings in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although, he's only been in a little over a week now. And in that time, surely you must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes, he's just the sort. What? Spending all his time in the dark and dingy room, sporting the... You're the assholes who made it dark and dingy! You sealed up his windows and shit! <laughs> Spending all of, all of his time in the dark and dingy room sporting that unscrupulous mustache. Why are you hating on this man's mustache? What the fuck's wrong with his mustache? The man never speaks, and I don't get me started on those shifty eyes. All the neighbors are talking about him. I've heard them, you know. People think he must be building a bomb in there or something. Oh shit, really? Oh dear, poor Mr. Nonson, man. How can people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm, nothing more. Well, you just called him a worm, so... <laughs> Anyways, I better I better be careful about inviting this maid to speak. She said enough damning things already. Okay. Alright, now you tell me about the bookshop, you crazy, crazy old man. Hmm? Sorry? Fold it, you say? Fold what? My clothes? My undergarments? Oh, no, 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 what I said was hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books. I like the young folk. <laughs> How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I like the books uh, uh, that have been there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. Specifically old tea. It must be old and stale. That my, uh, That's my daily routine, you see? Same... Same thing every day, including the day you're all thinking of uh, talking about. And at what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking out a book in the, after in the afternoon. 
well, all afternoon, and it would have been just before five. That's my daily wrap. Oh. And you're a guy wearing a green coat, and he said he saw a guy wearing a green coat. <laughs> okay, jury number six, I got my eyes on you, you fucking. And you're kind of, you're built like her too, huh? That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say, exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh, yes. No mistake right there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget the day in a hur uh, that day in a hurry, not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calab Calab blah, 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 blah Road when I slipped on ice and donked my head. It all... Uh, it's always worse after the snow stopped falling, and that's and that's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road, yeah? That's right. I live in Corn I live in Corn Pipe, you see. Heading down Cal fucking god damn it these names. Heading down Calabash Road is quickest way for me to get back to from your books. Jury number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement. It must, uh, it may be very, uh, fuck. <laughs> it may very well be extremely significant. Hmm, sorry? Extremely sick? No, 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 I'm quite all right, sir. You changed two of the jury's minds, Mr. Nalahoto. All right, you don't gotta fucking remind me. Stop, stop, stopping me. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Sasato. I love you. Shut up. I wish I knew how to do the Sasato takedown. I suppose words will, not, will have to suffice now. Okay. Jesus. So now I believe we have pressed everybody on their matters, yeah? And we change the uh, statement of two people? Okay, so who am I petting? So the poor woman was attacked from behind she was. How dreadful. Yeah, okay. I slipped over... Slipped over Calabas Road. I knocked myself out clean, you know? Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, cool. So, I'm gonna pit... Old Man Potts here. I don't know his name. I'm just gonna pit him. Pit him against you. Objection! Objection, bitch. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasonings. Flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, jury number two. Jury number six. My. My. Whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. Not like I was loud or... It's not like... It's not like I was loud or anything, you know? There's at least one fact of which we can be sure of here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on that day of the attack, he had been to your book and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man said he was he has no recollection of returning of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his very eyes. Yes, we are all aware of this, the poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Objection. Uh, calm down, bitch. <laughs> Can we really be sure of that, madam? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard jury number six account on what happened to him that day. The same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim. Who was wearing a green overcoat and fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my! <gasps> my goodness! You mean... That's right. I'm referring, of course... To hard of hearing jury number six. Oh, are you really suggesting... That the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes... Was the jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench where, uh, here with me today? That's, that's entirely possible, yes. I fucking hate these voices I'm doing. 
after all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Well, look at that. Oh my goodness me, I don't know what voice I gave her. Hmm, sorry, you need a pee. And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Notsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact jury number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And, I don't know why I gave Ryunosuke a deeper voice. <laughs> and if that's true, then clearly. The crime scene on Briar Road, where the woman was stabbed, was not on his way home. Oh my! You idiot old man! If you hadn't been so daft <laughs> as to be roaming about there, we'd have boxed this off hours ago. Oh really? What were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? It's a crime for the elderly to walk the streets these days, hmm? It's a crime to slip over on ice? It is a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overall coat, is it? I had like a hiccup, Jesus. My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You would like to change your leaning, I presume? I do declare that I would. I should, I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. And I would too. What? It is a crime to change your mind, is it? Well, I say fuck the law. Tip top cheerio. Well, that summonation explanation has concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. The eyes two, the nose four. So the nose have it, not guilty then. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. Objection! Oh, shut the fuck down and just drink your wine, bitch. You're so fucking dramatic. <laughs> could it, could it seem, fuck, curlish, churlish, Cur what the fuck is that word? Whatever. Uh, it could seem, it could seem churlish, cur, cur I don't fucking know, of me to drink from my hollow chalice moments after raising an objection, only to crush it in disgust. Brave or give the discourtesy. Lord Von Zykes, can you please stop making a mess in the fucking courtroom? Jesus. It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credit these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet, we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by... Hey, I like cheap trick. <laughs> that's, that's a good band. Good band, good song, whatever the fuck. One or the other. Performed by an Eastern entertainer. Yeah? Whatever do you mean? Objection. Yeah, don't listen to him. I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I said is the truth. Indeed. Starwald's jury number five was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you say it was good two yards of the pavement which you have excavated, yes? That's right. Took me the whole day, and they paid me measly trep trepidants, trep trep mm, trepidants, trepidants, trepidants. I don't know how to say that. For it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Uh, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue now. Two yards? Not that much. Probably he still could have walked on the sidewalk. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of of moderate, of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, Mr. Starwall, friend? Uh, well, me, well, can't say you're wrong, no. 
What? And did you, perchance, erect a sign to prevent pedestrians? I'm gonna erect something, all right. <laughs> to present, to present as fuck. To present, I can't speak after saying that shit. To prevent pedestrians from passing the site of your works? Uh, I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. No coaches could have had hope of passing anyways. And if just turning a gentlefolk back when they can. When they can. Why did I say like when they can? When they come, kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over two yards trench in this manner. What? In this fuck. In his meandering around. Oh. Is that true? Is it? The in in contra fuck god damn it words, the incontrovertible uh, fuck, incontrovertible. That's how you say that word, right? In incontrovertible. Oh, fuck no. Truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can only, uh, there can be no doubt that on its way back to his lodging, Mr. Knotts may walk down Briar Road, crushed in a single sentence. And old man. Cold man, you can talk. You say that at around five o'clock on that day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you the entire time? Oh, I, um, can't say I remember. You don't remember? How about a wager, my learned friend? You say it was the old man that the accused saw, but I would lie a thousand to one. To Peru. Oh, well, oh shit. <laughs> I like blinked and skipped the whole sentence. But I would lay a thousand and one against you being able to prove it. Oh shit. Order, order. Lord Van Zykes, explain yourself. My lord. If you had such a tre. tre fuck. Trin tringent. Tringent. That's a word. Tringent. If you have such a trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not prefer 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 fuck prefer it during the summonation examination? A lot of words, man. A lot of big words. I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Mm. But my hospitality has its limits. And they have been reached, I feel. Oh shit, he's getting serious. So, my lord friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What? What are you talking about? My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witness to the stand. Granted. Bailiff, bring forth the witness. It's next witness? Mr. Narahoro, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there was an eyewitness to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. All right. No matter who Von Zyx brings to the stands as his witness, no matter what they say. I believe in Soseki-san. I know he's innocent. And I keep believing to I keep believing to the very end, till the battle is over. What the fuck? I swear if your names are Hansel and Gretel, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this fucking game off. Witness, please state your names and occupation for the court. Go ahead, say it. Say Hansel and Gretel. I fucking dare you. Oh, you gotta yank him like that. Okay, all right. Constable Royley beat, sir. Nothing to report on the street, sir. What the fuck? Are you okay? And I'm Mrs. Beats. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to say I'm this young man's town hero's. I'm this young town hero's wife. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? What's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our- I gotta say, you both look like 
fucking children. Jesus. <laughs> In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, no. It was your husband I was asking about. He seems, uh, tired. Hardly, hardly surprising. While it's being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most de demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from the rare days off, our gallant officers tread some 20 miles a day, you know. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collecting taxes, surveying the streets, check the meters, and and uh, and are ready true. Ready true? Reading? Reading true? Fuck. Check the meters are reading true. Okay, yeah. Sorry. I don't know what the hell happened to me. I lost my mind for a moment. And they're responsible for keeping the streets clean. And lighting and extinguish uh, lighting and extinguishing, I gotta say the word, are street lights. There's a number of items on that list that doesn't sound much like a policing duties. I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet. That had collapsed a long time ago. But it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is his apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable <clears throat> constable. A constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. And they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir. Isn't it, Riley? Constable Riley beat, sir. Nothing to report, sir. What a great witness we are. This is gonna be. Very good. I'd like to hear from your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw on the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir. Speaking about him being tired, I'm fucking yelling all over the place. Jesus. This man is gonna fucking pass out. I might pass out with him. Witness uh, testimony. What the witness saw. It was our wedding anniversary and Roy Lee was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to, ch uh, to change after work. Anyways, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog and, uh, and on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. Then the other scattered something before running off. We ran straight over, of course, and then waited waited, and then went for help at the nearby police box. It was definitely the Japanese man in the dock. Roy Lee and I both saw him clear as day. But there was fog out. What the fuck? Alright. Well, that's extremely compelling testimony, I must say. Oh dear. This policewoman and his wife is claiming to have positively identified Mr. Natsume at the scene. Their testimony is true. The alternative course of events that you established in the summonation examination will be quashed. It's deaf Neil, in fact. Because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate uh, be, be, chan be chancing? Yeah, what a fortunate be chancing. And your wedding anniversary on your wedding anniversary too. Oh I know. But I still managed to go out for everything with my man. <laughs> for everything. I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Oh, hallelujah. Gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds very hard indeed. Indeed, however. This cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? My learned friend, the witness saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. They are testifying under oath that it was without a doubt the accused. <laughs> Fuck, why am I yawning so much? Without a doubt, the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. And one of these witnesses is a policeman, no less. So, you appreciate uh, so you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. Except that the man is so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. Enough prambling. Counsel, for the defense, commence your cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. 
Oh god, my voice is killing me. Another drink of water is required. <clears throat> I'm, you know what? Maybe I should not put my fucking my my big ass mug of water on the same stand as my uh microphone. <laughs> Maybe that's a bad idea. It was our wedding anniversary and Raleigh was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. That guy looks ragged as shit. Anyways, two silhouettes appear from the fog. Okay. Hold it! Tell me about the silhouettes. Two silhouettes. That's right. They were coming towards us, walking up Briar Road in the opposite direction. It was a rather plump uh, figured fellow by a... By, uh, fuck. It was a rather plump figured fellow by a scrawny, thin looking man. That does sound exactly like the victim as pictured in his print. Uh, in his print. In this print, like Mr. Knott's man. Yes, unfortunately, it does. And you're certain that at this time there was nobody else nearby? Oh, yes, quite certain. It was dark, and there are street and there are street lights on Briar Road. You see, there's nobody else around at all. Isn't that right, darling? Just gotta choke him real quick. Oh, what? Yeah, that's right. Of course, it was it was a light fog on the ground. But Briar Road is dead straight. Briar Road is dead straight, and you could see a fairly long way down the pavement. And then there's the street lights as well. I didn't see any other pedestrians. Before sleeping takes a firm hold, your answer please, Mr. Beat. And you quite sure of what you just said. Ah, yes, sir. As a copper, who spent... Jesus, she's fucking spooning over this man. <laughs> As a copper who spent all his days every day keeping watch on the streets, I swear to it. I am sure. As my love for Patricia is true. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Ugh, my fucking stomach. <laughs> They're still maintaining that there is no one else other than the victim and the attacker. It's starting to seem like they must have some. Uh, they must. Uh, fuck. It's starting to seem like that must have been how it really happened. It's beginning to seem that there's nowhere to run. Well, that didn't stop Mr. Hotsmate, did it? He fled the scene all too conveniently. Convincingly. Thank you. I believe we have a reasonably clear idea of the situation before the incident now. What happened to the crucial moments follow? Okay. All of a sudden, all of them just collapsed on the floor. Okay. One of them collapsed on the floor. Ran straight over a course, went for help from the nearby police box. It was definitely the Japanese man, but we saw him as clear as day. Hold it! How'd you see him as clear as day? It was fog. I mean, they said it was street lamps, but you know. But surely you wouldn't have been able to see his face. The light of the gas, uh, by the light of the gas street lamps, could you? We absolutely could. Us Londoners have exceptional have exceptional eyesight. I'll have you now. Right, 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 right. Okay. The light from the street lamps was more than enough. My husband already told you that the fuck. God damn it! Stop killing him. Ah, uh, yeah. And what of the fog? We're famous for it across the globe, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have who have lives with it, of course. Oh, it is, it is. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand. What? Fuck. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand at the end of your own arm. Yes, alright, I take your point, yes. Now, could you stop shaking your husband around? The constant fog makes our eyes very sharp, you see. That's why, I mean, looking at her eyes, fucking cutting through glass out here. That's why we can tell you for sure and certain that it was the little Japanese man we saw. Can't we, darling? Hmm? What? Ah, oh, yeah, yes. It was the it was the accused, no, no doubt. The mustache, the hunchback, the cat-like eyes, the taunt mouth. The snub nose, unmistakable. As far as the couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any questions. Hmm. 
were so psyche san that they saw running away from the scene of the crime. So that's it, is it? That's your entire testimony. What do you think, Mr. Narahoto? Well, I hate to admit it, but hearing the testimony really does seem as though Mr. and Miss Beats saw what they saw what they said they saw. Mr. Natsume running away from the scene on Briar Road that day. Yes, I feel the same. So if that's true, where does it leave us? The marriage of the jury is sure to call a guilty verdict after the testimony. Oh no, that's what that's what we what will we do? If Cosmo's son was here, what are you trying to say? I think he would try to find a contradiction somewhere else. What do you mean, somewhere else? Your statements about seeing Mr. Natsume is unequivocal. Calling that into question won't help. But if you can identify some other part of their testimony which appears to contradict the facts, you might be able to discredit them. Hmm, I see. Sly tactic. Put simply, we must focus on finding a discrepancy in these statements somewhere. If we don't, I'm afraid the trial may reach an early and unfavorable conclusion. Alright. I'll try and look. Wedding anniversary, taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. After two silhouettes appeared. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. And, and the other scattered. Some, uh, scattered something before. He ran straight. <clears throat> ran straight over a coast and then went for help. Alright. Well. Here's what's going to happen right now. I am going to take a quick break. Play ad while I'm doing that. Because two things. I gotta run to the bathroom and I need to just stretch my legs, honestly. So I will be right back. returned I had to stretch my legs and take a bathroom break you do not know how sitting in this chair for so long just fucking makes me want to lose my mind all right <clears throat> okay uh we're trying to find a discrepancy between what now ran over to that well let's let's fucking press that what is it your husband went to oh fuck <laughs> was it your husband that went to fetch help? No, no, I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I am a proud wife of one, after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Wake the fuck up! Hmm? What? Oh, yes, yes, that's right! I asked Miss Beat to go. I was off duty by that point. But, a Bobby's never truly off duty, of course, so I felt obliged to stay and guard the scene. Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Preserving the scene of the crime. <coughs> Excuse me. Preserving the scene of the crime is a task of a considerable importance. That's why I sent Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police box. Hmm. Forgive my ignorance, but... What do you mean exactly by the right police box? Depends on the crime's location, you see, as as to who deals with it. Where the woman was stabbed wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia the way to the police box for the beat for the beat the incident fell under so she could go and report it. I ran there as quickly as I could and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There's nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know. Hmm, yes, the potency. And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two model citizens. Oh, please, your mistake. You're making me blush. Isn't he, darling? What the fuck up? <laughs> yes, sir. What Patricia said, sir. You two are just the shining example of the fucking Aryan race, aren't you? <laughs> let's move, let's move on, shall we? Like just shining blonde hair, blue eyes, porcelain white skin. 
Right, rosy cheeks. All right. It was definitely in the Japanese, man in the dark. Riley and I both saw him as clear as day. We pressed that. Okay. Hmm. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. Anyways, two silhouettes. It's our wedding. Okay. Hold it! Hmm. Scattered something. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I couldn't quite make out what... Maybe I should just press them on what their wedding day is, because the fucking... The, uh, you know, the timestamp on the other shit could say differently. I highly doubt it, though, but whatever. Oh, well, I couldn't quite make out what it was at the time. But then, when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Hmm? What? Ah, uh, yes, that's right. It was- I don't know how I slowly made him into, like, an Australian or from some bullshit. <laughs> it was some old books. I see, old books. Yes, sir, the culprit had dropped a number of them all around where the victim laid on the pavement. Crikey. <laughs> Indeed, as clearly pictured in this photograph. Look at this photograph! The rotten Japanese man did- Oh, fuck, why you gotta say it like that? <laughs> rotten Japanese man did- did that, and he did the deed. Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. But we saw him. Yes, we did, sir. It was the man in the dock with the, uh, without a question, sir. The mustache, the hunchback, the cat-like eyes, the taunt mouth, the snub nose. Ah, yes, everything, sir. That's right as right. Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right, he looked down at the poor defenseless woman with those terrifying, intense eyes. And then suddenly threw his book onto the pavement and ran away. I see. This is tough. Seems as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind the court... I don't know what voice I just fucking gave him. May I remind the court that this ambig <clears throat> ambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Now, please continue. Yes, sir. All right, so tell me about your uh, your anniversary, right? What? Hold it. Tell me about your anniversary. Tell me, tell me, tell me about your anniversary. No time to change at the work, you say. Are you also a member of the police, Miss B? Oh no, sadly not. It's a job for strapping young men only. Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. Well, I think you can probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can you? I think Riley looks ever so handsome in his uniform. It suits you down to the ground, doesn't it, darling? Hmm? What? Oh, yeah. I just finished my beat. Matt and I were heading back to the station. I was actually planning to, uh, planning on getting change there. Is, is he talking in his sleep? Shit's creepy, man. Oh no, Royley, I much prefer you in uniform. I like to strip you down myself. <laughs> Sometimes, I don't recognize you when I see you in your plain clothes. You know, she doesn't get turned on unless fuck- How old are you people, by the way, while I'm making all these fucking jokes? <laughs> Court record, please, show me the people of interest here. Yes, yes, I would like to know. Before I lose my mind. Let's see, 23, 20, okay, we're perfectly- Jesus, you guys look like fucking children. Sometimes I don't recognize, uh, don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Oh dear, that doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the point. You're going for a meal after you finish your beat. That's right, sir. Yes, although I was fit to drop, to be honest, after spending the whole day on my feet. But, pleasing's my life, sir. As long as I'm proud owner of this, I've served my duty and queen to the end. My queen! What's that now? My warrant card, sir. Proof that I am a London copper. It has notable founding principles of the force written on it as I remember it to all of us policemen. What, what, hold up. I just had a stroke reading that. <clears throat> a force written on it as a reminder to all our policemen 
<laughs> of of our sworn duty to patrol the streets of London towards and uphold the peace up uh, towards London town and uphold the peace of the common man, sir. And for such a noble cause, I cover twenty miles every day without fail and without a grumble, because I know. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting like the SpongeBob speech. I will control my heart. I will do my patrols in the hall. I will make sure no one's running in the hall. <laughs> right. Because I know that the puddling of my boots is all London needs to hear to feel safe and secure. So, fighting crime doesn't appear to come into it then. But sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mr. B puts up with, um, Mr. Mrs. B puts up with a lot. I'm sorry. When he does that, his voice changes. Mrs. B puts up a, puts up with a lot being married to a Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Oh, Pat. Oh, Riley. Oh, what a charming couple. Their young love is such a joy to behold. Oh, Mikotoba. <laughs> just start. Like, Reynosuke just walks up to her. But he does, like, the Dio walk. <laughs> if a little over the top, perhaps. And then, kindly describe what happened next. Um, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Oh, yes, of course. What is it? Well, you keep asking us all these questions and making statements, assuming? <laughs> Everything we told you so far. It seems like you don't believe our- What the fuck, really? <laughs> she just got behind him, said he's gonna fight for me. Put him up, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, seems like you don't believe our testimony. Is that right? Is it? Well, out with it. What? No. no. Oh, no. It's really not that at all. My husband's policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. I remember every last detail. Everything. Like, like... Oh, I know. What about the books the man dropped? I could tell you the names of every single one. I could. Every single one. And you dare question how reliable my testimony is? That will do, Miss B. No, it won't do at all. That Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a minute that Roy Lee will. I, I really didn't mean to cause offense, but put your husband's fist down, please. Perhaps you should like the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Miss B. Might that appease you? Oh, thank you, my lord. That would settle things nicely. Lindy, darling. All right, let's see what we got then. I could tell you the names of ev uh, names of the four books he dropped at the scene. For what? Lady, lady, you really just had to... You could've just shut your fucking mouth, couldn't you? You could've just shut, you could've just shut your fuck up. <laughs> you could've just shut your fucking mouth. You had to keep talking. You just had to. What was it, what was it that made you kept talking? Was it the racism? I think it was the racism. Alright, just making sure. I'm just gonna... Objection. We're just gonna do that. So, uh, you're saying there were four books, yeah? Oh, that's right, I remember all of them. The picture of Mon Monsieur Somebody, What's It Yearnings, A Meal for Someone, and the thing, the thing gummy, thing gummy, what the fuck, the thing gummy something? I'm, I'm sorry, Miss B, you, you just, oh god. But there's a fundamental flaw in the statement of yours. Oh, no. What what flaw? Simply that, at the scene of the crime, there was only three books, not four. Now count them with me. One, uh, uh two, uh, uh, three, uh, uh, uh. What? This is the receipt from the bookshop where the defendant... <laughs> that was a stupid laugh I did. <laughs> Uh, from defendant uh, who bought his books. Your books? 
your books, my books, his books. Yes, and it defi- <laughs> it defiles? It defi- shit. It details Mr. Nods and May's purchases that day. But, as you can see, only three books are listed. Only three? But no, that can't be true. I remember seeing them. There were four books, I tell you. Four dirty old books. Oh, those dirty, dirty, naughty books. I think they were called Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> oh, really? Have I... Have I... Have a good look at this photograph. Look at this photograph! Have a good look at this photographic print of the scene of the crime. As you can clearly see from the evidence as well, there are only three books. But I just don't believe it. I saw them there, I swear it, I saw them. No, madam, I'm afraid your powers of observation cannot be relied upon. You just had to keep talking, didn't you, lady? So, it cannot be denied that though you say it was the defendant you saw, you could very well have been mistaken. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm not gonna scream, I'm not gonna do that. Objection! <laughs> she just throws a punch out! Alright, that was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it's plainly evident that it's your powers of deduction that cannot be relied upon, Mr. Learned Nipponese friend. Can you just say my fucking name? It's really easier that way. What? What cannot be denied is that these two witnesses saw the accused running from- I keep wanting to say accursed. The accused running from the scene. The fact that you know very well you have no hope of disproving. Huh? So, if you starve into a ver- Wow. <clears throat> you striven to avert the attention from that from that by dent by dent what by dent of some inconsequential discrepancies what the hell what am i looking at right now sorry my uh for some reason my stream just decided to go stupid <laughs> uh would that be fair oh uh he sees right through me. But your plan has somewhat, uh, re fuck, somewhat recoiled against you. For some reason, I want to say reconciled. What are you talking about? It's quite simple. Let me explain with a toast. Put some avocado on that toast, and then mark it up at a fairly high price, and say that it tastes so good, even though it's the most plainest shit in the world. To the policeman's wife and her entirely accurate testimony, in every respect. Oh. You see, uh, the matter is not up for debate. At the scene of at the scene on Briar Road, a total of four books were most definitely found. Objection. But what about the photographic print? It only shows three books. Quite right. Only three can be seen in that print. That print? You, you mean to say? Just gonna burn the house down. Okay, yeah. Allow me to present another on the sh on the sh uh, fuck one that shows the victim's hand. I don't believe it. Why is it burnt? It's the fourth book, as you will observe. The fourth book was hidden from view in the original print by the victim's torso. No. Jesus. Let's draw out this this uh, trial even more, huh? Order, order. There you see, you see. Look at that. Look, lookity look. Yes, I see. Oh my God, you're just gonna kill that man. It's just like I said, isn't it, my darling? Yes, sir. But you're always right, sir. Let us study the receipt for the books purchased by the accused on the day in question. Miss Beat, the title once again, if you please. Oh yes, of course. The picture of Monsieur somebody or other. The picture of Monsieur Lacroix. What's it yearnings? Canterbury, oh fuck. Canterbury yearnings? A meal for someone? 
Emil for Gab Gab Fuck. What is that name? Gab Gabri. Hmm. As the court has just heard, the witness remembers the book titles flawlessly, <laughs> flawlessly my ass, okay? Save for a few minor details. Mr. Um, shit, I want to keep saying Mr. Mrs. B powers of recollection can only be described as exceptional. Did you hear that, Roy Lee? The gentleman paid me a compliment. Yes, sir, flawless sir, Patricia is flawless. But... There's only three books on the receipt, and Miss Beat mentioned four. There's nothing surprising about that. Clearly the fourth book is that which is shown in the photographic print. I'm sorry, Counsel, but doesn't that not seem odd? Why should the fourth book be omitted from the receipt? It's not odd at all, my lord. As the photograph clearly shows, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, it belonged to the victim. The victim was holding her own book? I wonder, what became of the fourth book? Obviously, it wasn't overlooked by the investigation officer at the Scotland Yard. I have it right here, as evidence. No the fuck you don't, you liar! <laughs> the book that we see in the picture is burnt! And you got a perfectly fine one. You will submit that and the aforementioned photographic print to the court, please, counsel. My pleasure, my lord. The second crime scene has been added. Alright. The fourth book, which seems unharmed, The Lion's Pride. That's very peculiar. The Lion's Pride. The prosecution rests. I have nothing further to add. What? You seem surprised, my learned friend. But your resistance until now has been in vain. Entertaining, yes, but futile. The scrib- the fuck- the scrib- scrib- fuck- spur- shit- spurious? Spurious? How the fuck- how the fuck you say that? My mouth don't do words good. The spurious longer route to the accused lodgings that you tried to establish in your summonation examination. And the attempted discrediting of the witness's powers of recollection in your cross-examination. These are some big-ass words. <laughs> Futile. Walked right into this, didn't I? You see? Everything we said is true. Isn't that right, my darling? Yes, Pat! Marry me! <laughs> You're already married. So perhaps the lady and gentleman of the jury would like to reconsider their positions. Should the court waste any more time on this Nipponese travesty? Jesus, why you guys, you guys are so fucking racist in this game, Jesus. Or is the decision you have to make all too apparent already? You have heard all of the witnesses and seen all of the evidence. This trial has run its course. Mr. Narahodo, I'm afraid we are in a terrible, uh, uh, fuck. I lost my ability to read. Jesus. We are in a terrible, uh, precarious position. I know, but if I fight back in the wrong way now, I could very well just make matters worse. Thank Rienosuke, think. What do you, uh, what do you want to do? Shit. I mean, from what I learned through the other games, you just, she's always raised an objection, I guess, right? I mean, Raise my hand in the air like I just don't care. I'm not done yet. No, my learned friend, it's over. The last cross-examination was your final chance to establish a credible defense, and you failed. The die has been cast. There's no more room for debate. Well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but... I can't think of what to say. If I may, Lord Von Zykes, if you may, it seems somewhat boorish to close down the debate at this point. Hmm. Your insignificant little eastern isle must be uh, must be a lawless hole indeed. For a lowly judicial assistant to have the audacity to intervene at a moment like this, she's been all, she's been intervening for like every fucking trial thus far. So, oh. Huh. 
Damn, you gotta put her down like that, though? <laughs> That's so unnecessary. I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. So, you'll have to forgive me, but I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. Mr. Narahoda. Hmm. One of this land's great guiding principles is tolerance. So the court will hear you, madam. Go ahead, Mrs. Sato, please. Very well. Pray, what insight can you give us? What have we all overlooked in this matter that you see fit to pursue further? Well, the court has been presented with new evidence, but only after the last cross-examination finished. I see. And you believe that this new evidence warrants further examination, don't you? Um, Mr. Narahoto, what do you think? It's just possible that the new evidence might be the decisive proof we've been waiting for. The judge is sure to ask the members of the jury to announce their learnings in a moment. And of course, he's sure to ask you to explain what the crucial piece of evidence is, anyways. So, you must take this opportunity to examine the newly, newly presented evidence as thoroughly as possible. Yes, I understand. And thank you, Mrs. Sato. This is it. Mrs. san has managed to win us one last chance here. I can't let it go to waste. The defense wishes to proceed, uh, to proceed, to present evidence, my lord. No, the fuck you don't. Let me check this shit first. You can't just say I wish to present it. Give me a moment here. First of all, okay, it is burnt. All right. Hmm. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. My bad. Lion's pride. <clears throat> Let me see. It's a book entitled The Lion's Pride. I'm afraid I don't know any English literature at all. So it wouldn't be something I've heard. Wait a minute. The Lion's Pride? That's strange. I think I've heard of a book by that name before. And very recently, too. It's a title I recognize, too, Mr. Narahoda. Jesus, just call me by my fucking first name. Oh, look at this. The book has been badly burnt. You're right. You'd never be able to read this in a state, especially not the later pages. A terrible waste. Judging from the squash edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very recently. Hmm, the book. Recently damaged by fire. Why does that seem to raise a red flag with me? Alright. Let me just check this one. Yeah, uh-huh, yep. Yeah. Nothing different here. Very well. The defense may present one further piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers a, pro a profound insight into the case, and as her hereto, hitherto, hitherto, out of the term people don't use no more, hitherto being overlooked. All right, I'm just gonna. Take that. The evidence in question is what we can see from the newly presented photograph print in the scene of the crime. The fourth book, found in the victim's hands. Objection. Don't you fuck- it's my time to shut- you sit the fuck down! <laughs> Get tired of your bullshit! We already discussed the fourth book at length, no the fuck we have. Other than it being in the victim's grasp at the time of the incidents, no significance has been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further would be fraudulent waste of the court's time, as you well know. Hmm. Mm, yes, I'm afraid, counsel. I must concur with the- What the hell? Are you serious? When I, off when I offered you an opportunity, you led the court to believe that the evidence in question contained a hitherto undiscovered clue. So, I must insist that you elaborate, counsel. Will you identify the clue at once? Do I make myself clear? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I'll do that. That was my plan, anyways. Is that not a huddle? I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid the thorough examination of this evidence. Which means, it may very well be on the right track. Yes, I think you... <laughs> I think you might be right. So, counsel. 
precisely where is the vital... Vital? Why did I say it like that? Where is the vital clue to this case? Which this fourth book conceals. It's right here. Got it! Got it! <laughs> I, would, I would ask the court to observe the back of the book in the question. The back? What are you... Good gracious. It's been burnt to a crisp. Isn't crisp what, like, British people call, like, potato chips and shit? <laughs> so, so we have to ask ourselves, was the victim clutching this? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just had, like, a moment there. So we have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? Is it undeniable? What? <laughs> is it undeniable an extreme... Well, it is undeniably an extremely unnatural thing for her to have been doing. Objection. Unnatural, you say? And what of it, my Nibani's friend? Oh. Where do I concede the point? If it bears no realization, fuck, no relation to the case, there's nothing to discuss. So. Should you wish to assert that the fire damage is some veiled clue as to what happened that day? Pray, do enlighten us all. What truth does this charred book hide? Hmm. A charred book. There's just one possibility here, which I can't quite bring myself to rule out. It's an outside chance, certainly, but worth a try. All right, I'll explain my theory. But remember, it's just a game theory. <laughs> Don't keep us waiting any longer, then, Council. Explain this theory of yours. What are you suggesting that you can ascertain from the fire damage? Okay. The shop it was sold. Its owner. My lord, the burn on the back of this book reveals a startling truth. About the book's owner. I beg your pardon? But we already know who the book belongs to. The victim was gripping it in her hands and she as she fell to the floor. After all, it's obviously hers. The question of how this book came to be in the victim's hands has yet to be answered. However, as to the question of who the book really belongs to and where it originated, the defense has very credible answers. Good gracious, how could you possibly? Very well, I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitable demise. But do remember, the members of the jury may well burn you if your little gamble goes awry. Counsel, the defense res fuck. The defense's response here is very likely to influence the final outcome of the show. Really? Please. <laughs> Get this shit over with. So tell the court, who do you claim owns this burnt book? It's none other than Mac tonight. He owns it. Take that. The answer is that the book belongs to a couple who owns the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mr. and Mrs. Giradeb. The landlords? And whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fate at work, I do not know. But of all the people in the of all wow, wow, <laughs> of all people in London, one of the six chosen for the jury duty is in this courtroom today. It's none other than Miss Giradab herself. Oh my goodness, me? I think you must be mistaken, sir. I'm I am not Mr. Giradab's wife. I am his maid. Things would be so much easier if you would just drop the pretend. All right, then. How about a simple question for you? Have you ever seen this book in Mr. Gerdeb's house? I would never presume. <laughs> I don't even know what voice to give her. I would never presume to all the books he keeps. In. Objection! This is outlandish behavior. This woman is the accused landlady, as you say. I need to take like a moment. <laughs> I need to drink some water. My throat hurts. 
It is fucking killing me. <coughs> I've been doing this shit for like, what, two and a half hours? Alright, you implicate the hardworking members of the public. You besmirch her without a shred of evidence. Your actions are unforgivable. Objection. This is not mere conjecture. The defense happens to know that on the day in question, at almost exactly the same time as the victim was stabbed on the pavement below, another incident was taking place in the room of the top floor of Mr. and Mrs. Gerleb's house. Good Lord! What sort of incident, Council? A fire, my lord. Great to say, it was, I don't know what voice to give him either, fuck, it's been like, it's been like, what, three months since I last see these fuckers? <laughs> Great to say, it was, happened in the blink of an eye, you know? The whole place filled with smoke, couldn't see a, a bally thing, bally? Didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The Bali furniture started Bali. Didn't he say bloody last time? Am I wrong? Did he always say Bali? Hmm. The Bali furniture started to go uh, fuck. Started going up as well. Worst of it is, I lost my favorite book called The Lion's Pride. See, I remembered him not because of the name of the book and what he said, because of the fucking lion statue. I was like, mm, I remember that. The Lion's Pride. By Jove. The very same title that the subject that's the subject of this debate. Oh dear me. Objection. This is raisable? Risable? Risable? Um, what? Never seen that word day in my life. Uh, <laughs> all of you told the court is that the book by the same name was involved in the fire. In which case, it would be reasonable to assume that it was burnt to ashes. And entirely unreasonable to infer that it magically removed itself to the scene of the crime. Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you that the cause of the fire was marital discord. Without going into details, it appears that Miss Gerdeb was considerably enraged. Apparently, she continued to attack Mr. Gerdeb even amidst the flames. Oh, how awful! I can't imagine ever being so horrid to the one you love, can you, Royally? As she chokes the fucking life out of him. Absolutely not, sir. My petitioner would never raise a thing against me, sir. Never. At all my favorite old novels in the case. But as soon as the fire got hold of them, that was it. Whoosh, up in smoke. Then the wife started hurling things at me. There was I, backed up against the window, under heavy enemy fire. In, uh, in fuck. Incendiary books became tens to the dozens. The man had his back up against the window, and he had burning books thrown at him? Goodness gracious, are you suggesting that the book was thrown through a window and landed, landed coincidentally at the scene of the crime? Objection! No. A thorough investigation of the surrounding area was conducted the very the very evening of the incident. And there's no report of the Gerdab's window pane being broken. That's quite true. We also saw no signs of broken glass when we visit the Gerdab household. That's because the window was open, guys. But it's not conceivable that the window was open at that time. Not even remotely. Let us not forget the season and the chilling the chilling winter that accompanied it. I mean, if the fucking... Mm, you wouldn't really open a window during a fire. You really shouldn't open windows during a fire, because then that presents more oxygen to the fire and just makes it worse. You can make that shit explode, actually. No Lundler would ever leave their window open in the middle of winter. Hmm. Does the defense populate... Populate? Populate. That's not even the word. Postulate big words out here. This scenario is all seriousness, counsel. Do you earnestly claim that the book found at the scene of the crime was a flaming projectile thrown by Mr. Gerdeb's wife? I believe it's possibility, my lord. That's quite a- I don't even know who said that. Well, 
I hope that everyone can see you for what you are now, you little foreign trickster. You call yourself a lawyer, but you're just a coward, a mean coward. Really. Claiming that our little tiff set the whole neighborhood alight, honestly. Implying that I'm merely polishing, uh, posing as a maid for appearance's sake. How could you? It's nothing to do with the beastly case. With the beastly? What? With this beastly case. Not any of it. All you've done is solely our family name. No, I assure you, that was never my intention. Dragging an upstanding citizen's name through the mud simply to divert attention from your failing defense. What the fuck? Why'd you swing at him? <laughs> Why would... What? <laughs> it's so unnecessary. I should box your ears. Well, <laughs> I should box your ears. That's what I should do, and utter it's utterly unforgivable. To right. Why don't you sit the fuck down? Nobody was talking to you. Here we go with this bullshit. How long have we been sat here listening to this Nipponese spouting out his fancy foreign theories? But think about it. At the end of the day, the only person who would possibly have stabbed the victim is the little hunchback with the mustache, and he ran away from the scene too. I do declare you are right. It's true. Yes. What did I tell you? Mistake uh, makes no sense. Uh, fuck, I can't even read no more. <laughs> makes sense to me. Hmm? Sorry. What's that? Well? It would appear that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury are once again in full agreement. What is your position, Lord Von Zykes? In truth, my lord, I feel that this has been unnecessarily protracted proceedings. But then, one must, all <clears throat> must was always exercise patience in order to savor the best vintage. No, wait! The, the mystery of the fourth book, it still has... Look at my leg! It's very sexy, long, and slender. <laughs> I work on these quads every day. If books are your predictions, predictions, pred predilection, my bad. If books are your predilection, my learned friend, study them on your own time. I like books. What? No forgive the discourtesy this time? <clears throat> if that's the case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now state your individual decisions regarding the defendant's culp- 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 oh, fuck. Culp- I can't even say the word no more. Jesus! <laughs> uh, whatever. Is he guilty or not? Guilty! Guilty. 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 What? That's his voice? That man has a light voice. I thought his, his voice would be more gruff. Oh my god, this is the second time you guys did this shit. Fuck! Thank you for that from unambiguous response. That's twice now. It's over. I don't think I can do it again. Mr. Naruhodo, don't give up. What do you mean don't give up, isn't it? Like, we can't sway their opinions twice in a row, can we? Have you forgotten? The battle isn't over yet. You're not suggesting. Of course, the defendant has the rights to another some- Do we? I thought we, I thought we could only do that once per trial. You can still convince the jurors to change their minds. You have one more chance. My lord, the defense acts to exercise the right of some nation examination. Mm. You believe you still have tricks up your sleeve. I don't intend to trick anybody. I intend to uncover the truth. This is no time to be downcast. As long as there's a chance, I have to stay strong and determined. I'm so gonna feel this on my voice tomorrow, and it's gonna suck. Ah, <laughs> I wanna die! All right. You know, I remember hearing a lot of things. I had to take a drink of my water because I'm gonna die soon if I don't. <clears throat> I remember hearing a lot of things from people where they were like, yeah, so I wanted to do a playthrough on, like, from, from, like, podcasts and just hearing from, like, other Let's Players and shit. 
They're like, yeah, I uh, streamed uh, fucking the um, Phoenix Wright trilogy, did one stream and then said, oh no, never again. I'm not doing this shit. Fast forward to me right here. Who's doing fuck it. This is like the fourth Ace Attorney game that I've streamed. Did the whole trilogy, right? Which was fucking awesome. Oh my God. That trilogy is really fucking good. Um, you know, the whole remaster trilogy and shit. And now I'm doing the Great Ace Attorney, and then after this, well, after this, I'm going to do the second Great Ace Attorney game. Well, not after this, but later down the road, of course. And then do the DS games and all that shit, because now I'm in the thick of it. I got to do it. I have considered the defense uh, counsel request for a further examination and explanation of the jury. And I have determined that the court must uphold the defense judicial rights to this procedure. So, counsel... You will now proceed with your second summonation examination. If anyone's interested in seeing those, uh, those streams that I did of the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy, it's on the YouTube. It's right there on the screen. You can go check that out. <laughs> Self-plug. Yeah. I presume the jury is ready, Mr. Foreman. We are, my lord. Oh, yes, my lord. Very well. In that case, I must ask each of you now to stay clearly and concisely for the court the grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of their crimes judicial findings all right the accused left behind the fuck <laughs> the accused left behind evidence at the scene didn't he those three books of his if there was some novel attempt Fuck, I can't even remember the voices I give these people half the fucking time. If there's some novel alternative explanation about how the victim was stabbed, I must reconsider. Even if the woman was throwing books, it can't be related to the crime if the window was closed, can it? Deary me. It was only a little book, hardly life-threatening, even... I love how she's like, his aim is to besmirch our family name, and now he's all like, so what's the grounds that you find him guilty of this crime she's like come on guys it was just a book on fire it's not like i was gonna kill him or anything look i just want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this man's just like i don't give a shit i want to go home i'm tired of this shit i got some work to do gotta feed my family just want to get this over it. if i don't bring home some pay tonight it'll be i'll be in a titty bit of trouble not even a little titty <laughs> Come to think of it, if we had fire at home a while ago, it gave me the sneezes. What? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's considerably more tangible arguments from members of the jury. More tangible, my ass. With one notable exception, of course. My learned friend was unable to find fault in the previous witness testimony. Hmm. So the course must accept the fact that it was indeed the accused seen fleeing from the scene. And more. they don't gotta accept shit. No one else was even at the scene of the committed murder. Well, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it, wow, I can't even fuck. Well, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it would seem as if the conclusion is somewhat set in stone. I fail to see how it can be argued any other way. That means I'm afraid, daring. Uh, during this summation examination, it's essential that you establish some other tangible explanation of the facts. But how? What would constitute a tangible explanation here? Isn't it obvious? Who stabbed the woman, and how? Those two details are all you need to prove. Simply give us a name and a method by which the attacker was... Well, by which the attack was conducted. And there I was, thinking it might be hard. Mr. Narahodo? You have to do it, otherwise it really will be where the trial ends. No pressure then. I got this. I mean with all my with all my experience, right? I did dang and rompa. I did this bullshit. Right, I can do it. This is like what, the fifth fucking the fifth like court game whatever I played. <laughs> I presume you're a prepared counsel. Oh yes, my lord. All right, Rianowski, focus your mind now. Clearly, the key to the summation, ex uh, summation examination. Words. 
is going to be juror number four, the maid, or should I say Miss Gerdep. We have a book that disappeared from the Gerdep's house on the evening of the incident. And the fourth book found in the victim's hands. Must be a way to link the two. Yes, that's what we find. That's what we find. Wow. I'm losing it. <laughs> Using every technique I've learned in my short career so far, whatever it takes. Don't forget to keep an eye on Miss Gerdabs and how she reacts. Even if, even the things other people say. Yeah, yeah, I know how this works. It's coming back to me, okay? It's only been three months. Time for my rebuttal. <clears throat> Alright. Who's getting pressed on first? Even if the woman's throwing the books, it can't... Okay. You seem important. Hold it! But what about the possibility that the window was open? What about it? I mean, there's just no way it could have been. How can you be so sure? The prosecutor follow, uh, the prosecutor fellow over there said it earlier, didn't he? Winters in London are no joke. You don't want to invite all sorts of colds indoors. So no, the window wasn't open. Us Londoners like sitting by the fire and staying warm, see? But you couldn't categor cate fuck. Couldn't categorically state that the window wasn't open, could you? It just wasn't. They would have uh they wouldn't have opened it. And what's the point of even having a window? Having a why did I say it like that? Point of even having a window. Council! You will kindly refrain from childish bickering. <laughs> Sorry. Somehow I need to show their undeniable poss possibility that the window was open. Because this young man isn't going to budge otherwise. Alright. You, talk to me. Hold it! Miss, I like throwing fiery books. But the little book was on fire at the time, was it not? With flames of love, I'll have you know. Bullshit. There's really no such thing as loving incendiary bombs. Why are you swinging at the dude? <laughs> that man is like... Man, it's fucking like five times your size. You shouldn't be doing that. Well, he bought it upon himself at playing with fire to betray... Uh, to, fuck, to betray a fiery love. Isn't it? Well, don't you agree? Well, uh... And what kind of betrayal was it? It's certainly a bad thing, yes? But I think the argument might have arisen out of your misunderstanding, Miss Caradette. Never you mind that. The point is, we were having... We were having a jolly little dispute. Nothing more. And I won't have any more of these suggestions that is... <laughs> any more suggestions that is what everything... What, wow. 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 My mind. And I won't have any more of these suggestions that it was anything whatsoever to do with this crime. Fuck. Alright, well. Let's see about that. He doesn't seem to be turning a hair at Miss Garadev's written list onslaught. Because this man knows that if he does, <laughs> it's over for him. Ah, oh, damn. It's almost as though he used to it. What a gentle soul he is. What a gentle soul he is! And it turns over to him and he's ready to fucking knock me out. Alright. You just want to get this over with, huh? How can you sit there and say something like that? A man's future is at stake. Well, him and me both then, like I said before. What? I told you already. <laughs> I'm a day laborer, aren't I? If I don't bring home any... any readies... readies? Some readies. What? If I don't bring home some readies with me tonight, you'll find me floating face down in the thymes tomorrow. Thames. It's pronounced Thames. I'm sorry. What? You heard me. My missus isn't, isn't one to mess about, you know. She can be fierce. Believe you me. You think I'm big? That lady's bigger than me! <laughs> Another shining example of marital bliss, huh? I mean, you would know Ryanosuke, I guess. Because, well, not marital, really. But fucking, what's her name? Cesaro keeps tossing your ass across the room. A situation like this cropped up the other day. It was, well, um... Did you know? It's funny, but I can't quite remember. Sorry. It was too frightening, and that's the thing. I must have blocked it out. Helpful. I wonder if Ms. Beat will ever get dragged into Thames... 
if Mr. B will ever get dragged into the Thames by his scarf. Don't even go there, Mrs. Soto. What's with the women being super violent in this game? You got Sasato throwing me. You got the fucking wife-made lady beating up on her husband. You got this guy getting the shit beat out of him by his wife. You got fucking Mr. Beat getting choked on the whole entire time. Like, <laughs> why are y'all so violent? Like, god damn it. There must be some way to jog his memory about this. Come to think of it, we had a fire at home a while ago. Hold it! Okay. Does that have anything to do with your decision about the defendant's culp cap culpability? Sorry? What's that? You have to speak up, lad. Yeah, okay. Could you tell us more about that fire? It was last winter. My grandchild baked me a lovely cake on my birthday. Oh, how sweet. It had 75 candles on top of it, it did. What a sight to behold it was. You put candles on a cake? What? Was it some kind of devil worship? <laughs> is like, we don't do that shit in Japan. Candles on a cake. Devil. Of course not. It was an angel cake to celebrate my birthday, obviously. It seems that a common custom here in Britain, uh, in Great Britain, Mr. Narahodo. Anyways, I mustered all to puff out this, uh, to puff the, the fuck. I mustered all my puff to blow them out. Only I must have blown the wrong side. The flames didn't go out, but, uh, flames didn't go out, but the candles went flying all over the room. The furniture caught... Uh, furniture caught and everything went out. The whole place filled with smoke. Definitely sounds like devil worship to me. And by the sneeze, I presume, you mean a cold. But how did you catch cold from a fire? What a fiasco it was. The grandchildren blessed them and threw water over me as they tried to put out the flames. And then, because the whole room was filled up with smoke, of course, we had to open all the windows to clear it. The windows. So what you're telling me is that there was fire near the windows and on the walls and it caused sweat to drop down. <laughs> All right, the body winter. <laughs> yeah, I went there. The body winter air rushed over to me like devil dancing on my grave. It did. Can we stop with this devil shit? <laughs> I caught a terrible cold from it. He put me to the hospital for a while. I won't forget the I won't forget the birthday in a hurry. I knew it was devil worship. <laughs> but something about the old man's story is playing is playing on my mind for some reason. Okay, yeah. I need to get the shut up, Cesaro. I love you, but you gotta stop interrupting me. Give me a moment, okay? Please. Let me figure this shit out by myself. I may be stupid, but I'm not dumb. <laughs> Alright. Come on, Cesaro, I got this. 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 Stop it. Stop talking. <laughs> Damn it. That's the spirit. Yep, it is. All right. So I'm going to pit you. Bam. Objection. Against you. Let's hear it. These two juror statements clearly contradict one another. They do? How exactly, counsel? Don't point at me again. I told you it wasn't me. Hmm? What was that you say? Speak up, lad. Speak up. Jury number three. Did you see? Oh, me? See? See what, sir? Did you hear jury number six account of his birthday celebrations last year? It seems, despite being a Londoner, he once opened his window in the middle of the winter. Oh, yes, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then you'd be mad not to open the... Oh, shit! <laughs> exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Garadab's household. And Mr. Garadab had the following to say about it. The whole place was filled with smoke. Oh, my. Oh, my. He oh, I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. You, uh, what, what's the button for this? Pursue. Excuse me. Excuse me, man. You, you all right there? Jury number four. You got some. You got something you want to say here? Uh huh. Yeah. Miss Garadam. Oh dearie me. What is the meaning of this? How dare you imply that I'm hiding who I really am? 
it's imperative that you confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drop the pretense, uh, pretense now. Wh what is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you, uh, did you or your husband open the window? What? I beg your pardon, what are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and bookcase caused, uh, after the carpet and bookcase caused, after the carpet and bookcase caught fire as they did. Fuck me. <laughs> in a situation like this, it's un inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if we did? Oh, all right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window, which can't have been easy since I continue uh, since I continue to give him a justly deserved book battering. Even though your house was on fire. Oh, you never stop throwing until the anger subsides. It would be terribly bad for the nerves to do otherwise. Uh, of course. I should have realized. That's a significant step forward, Mr. Nanahoto. He managed to establish the window was open. You simply must have uh, must, uh, must have that added to Miss Garadab's formal statement. All right. Now you mentioned it. Yes, the window was open at the time. Okay. Hmm. What about you? What was your thing again? How the victim was stabbed. Ooh. The accused left behind evidence at the scene of crime, didn't he? Three books. Three books of his. Okay, well, I mean... The window could have been open when the woman was throwing books. I mean, it's definitely possible. I mean, she fucking just admitted to it. Does that not... Do I gotta really pit you guys against each other? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do that then. Just, you know? Objection! Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Oh, Hold it, what? I'm sorry, but as foreman of the jury, I have to object. It's completely nonsense. What the fuck? What are you talking about? A banker, don't forget, and a, an educated man. There's no contradiction as far as I can see. Well, there's no contradiction, but still, he he said if you can prove it, he'll change his mind, and I fucking proved it, so... All right, whatever. That's my first strike in this chair. Whatever. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Listen, I got this, Zato. Sometimes the game just likes to bullshit me, okay? Jesus. You know, because common sense doesn't fucking help out here. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, well, let's get you to confess up more to this then, I guess. The fourth book found at the scene of the crime shows very obvious signs of fire damage. And the title of the book is The Lion's Pride. The same title, in fact, as the book that Mr. Garadab told us he had been reading. Well, I really couldn't say. On that day in question, did you or did you not throw uh, throw it at your husband? The copy of The Lion's Pride that had been that he had been reading. I did, I did was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I hurled it straight at him. And now you come to mention it, yes. He was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the court from the out from the onset? Because I couldn't, you insolent little man. I didn't remember. At times like that, you pick up and throw whatever you have laying in your hands as as you as well fuck. As well you know. I really don't. I barely noticed I was throwing a book. Oh, much less the what? Excuse me. You got something you want to add there? What is it, jury number five? You know something? I remember what it was. The memory I blocked out. Huh? It was, I was listening to what his granny was saying. What? <clears throat> I was listening to what his granny was saying. Brought it all flooding back. Who are you calling Granny, you cheeky devil? I'm Miss Garadab of the or the maid, I'll have you know. The man doesn't even flinch. Please, tell me that's not because he's used to being hit all the time. 
It was about two weeks ago now. I just got back home after work. I put my hand in my pocket for the wages I just earned that day, and I nearly died. There was a hole. Every last penny I dropped out. Oh man, really? Shit, that. Oh, damn it. You know, you know what that reminds me of? That it never happened to me. But definitely happened to people I knew where they're like, oh man, I'll be right back. I'm just going to go pick up my check from work. And I'm like, you should really get direct deposit. And they're like, no. And then on their way back to the car, a gust of wind, right? Because it's not fully tucked in their pocket. And you just see that fucking check go flying. And I'm like, oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> Why would you put it in your pocket? Hold it in your hand the whole entire time, damn it. Make sure you got a firm grip on that shit. You know, firmly grasp it. Oh dear, what a disaster. You haven't heard the half of it, boy. Oh? The wife was cutting up some chicken at the time. All right. I feel personally attacked now. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, I could hardly get the words out, but I told her straight. I lost the day's wages, love. Next thing I knew, the blade was whilsting pat was whilsting. Wow, I can't read. Can't you tell? It was whistling past my ear, stuck into the wall next to me. It did. About an inch deep. No words. Just terror. I could smell it then, you know? The god-awful stench of the Thames. I was sure I was going to end up face down in the muddy banks that night, I can tell you. Now, that's a real disaster, isn't it? I'll never use the word lightly again. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is this. When women lose their rage, they'll throw anything at you. Knives, hatches, hammers, you name it. But boy, ain't that the fucking truth. I know, I know that feeling. Mr. Narahodo, you mustn't think that all women are so short to- No, not by the slightest, Suzato-san. I would never be mad at you, although you throw me across the room every fucking time. No, I wasn't thinking that. Throwing household objects at people is, well, it's so uncivilized. At least attack with honor using a using a bow or something. Jesus. What attack? Who are you gonna attack? Never mind. Anyways, that man's worth No no no, let's not never mind this shit, because I'm the one you're gonna attack. Alright. We'll come back to the bow and arrow thing later, alright? If I did. Yeah. Okay, so tell me more about this, uh, you know, this attack against your life. Your wife really threw a kitchen knife at you. That's right, she was chopping meat with it. Had a titty edge on it. Titty? Titty? Tiny? Tit? No, the word is titty. <laughs> tidy? Tidy. Yeah, tidy, yeah. No, I'm gonna stick with titty. Had a titty edge on it, believe me. Still... It's all memories, isn't it? It started with the smile she threw. <laughs> she started with the smile she threw me uh, when we were courting, and since then, the last thing she thrown at me was grown long with our. Wait, what? I'm sorry, I had a moment there. And since then, the last thing she's thrown at me has grown along with our relationship. There was a cup, then a glass, then a pot, then a kettle, then a chair, then a. What the fuck? All right fucking WWE throwing chairs and shit. A wardrobe, a cooker, a bath. Ooh. Remember when I said where he was like, you think I'm a big dude? My wife fucking five times bigger than me. That was a joke. But you tell me this lady throwing bathtubs at you? Alright. Your wife, your wife must be beefier than you, damn it. And things, hey man. Take a whole lot of man to deal with a whole lot of woman. <laughs> and things come to a head last week when she threw me right into the Thames. Still, she's not so bad when she's calmed down. She's a little sweetheart, really. I'm so happy for you. If you want to know what I think, I think this whole idea of ladies first that we're so obsessed with... Wait, what? This whole idea of ladies first that we're so obsessed with in this country was taught up by some clever lads with taught up wow what i say like that was taught up by some clever lads who've been tossing the thames a few too many times by their wives that's 
A very interesting theory. What a terrible thought. On the face of it. This junior's, uh, this junior, why did I say junior? This juror's statement just sounds like a really extreme, and I, I, I can't say the word, damn it. But I think it might turn out to be an extremely powerful weapon. A weapon I might be able to use to make the jurors accept the alternative explanation here. Oh no! <laughs> no! No! She didn't throw a knife at him, did she? And it went flying out the window right into the lady's back? Oh, please don't tell me that's not what happened. That's so fucked up. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh no. All right. Okay. You, tell me what your fucking deal is right now. So. You might be willing to change your decision, you mean. Oh my, such delight on your face. But I... <coughs> I'm gonna die here. But I'm afraid I shan't be swayed by emotion. Despite what you think of me, I am very moderate... I am a very modern metropolitan... Metro... Did I say that right? Yeah, metropolitan. Um, <laughs> and rational woman. That's great. Yeah, I didn't ask. If one reads the morning papers, it's all forgotten by tea time, isn't it? So why read them in the first place? You see, modern, metropolitan, and rational thinking. What did you say? And not at all extreme. As I see it, an overwhelmingly suspicious Japanese man has been implicated by overwhelmingly strong testimony. So, despite one or two minor puzzlements, I do declare that the man is overwhelmingly guilty. Moderate, metropolitan, and rational logic. What did you say? Overwhelmingly. But us modern gals are always delighted to embrace new fads, you know. So, I'd be only happy to consider any new, any excellent new theory if you could come up with one. I'll be happy to do that. Great. Let's do our very best to not dispo <clears throat> not disappoint this modern and metropolitan young lady. Right, 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 right. Okay. I'm glad you omitted the rational there. All right. I mean, you changed your statement a little bit too, so I guess I can press you on it. At the point when the victim was attacked on Brayer Road, we know there was a small house fire in the Garadep household on the opposite side of the street. Well, yes, it certainly seems that way. On account of the smoke, I imagine would have had the windows wide open in spite of the cold. We also know that Miss Gerdeb was throwing flaming books at her husband. Her husband, who was backed against the corner by the window due to his wife's frenzied attack. Yes, that's right. So, there's definitely a chance that one... You just keep going, right? But I already, I think I already, yeah, I already got you on that, so I'm going to continue this one. There's definitely a chance that the books could have yeah, 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 flown past window. Only, only what? Only I can't really see how it could have gone all the way over to... Would you like for her to, to swing an arm at you? You see the strength of this lady? Uh, so I don't really see how I can change my decision, really. Oh, I see. That wasn't enough. Huh. I thought it was gonna take, uh, I thought I was gonna, wow. What's it gonna take to persuade these people? Okay. And the only one I haven't heard from yet is you. And I highly doubt you're gonna change your mind or give me any crazy information. But as we know now, there are four books, not three. Well, what difference does it make? There's every possibility that the fourth book, in fact, belongs to the defendant's landlord. Yes, that's the part I have a problem with. Sorry. Well, at the point the woman was stabbed, this landlord fellow was at home, wasn't he? Enjoying a fiery scrap with his wife or something, you say? That's not exactly how I put it, no. Well, anyways, the point is, the fellow and his wife were somewhere else when it happened. Hmm. I think... That's what you call a strong alibi. So, it couldn't have been the landlord who did it, which only leaves the Nipponese fellow. Honestly, 
<laughs> okay. Honestly, I can't see uh, what all the I, I, pro, 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 I can't even say the fucking word. Kill me. I suppose it is, since nothing witty left to say. All right. <clears throat> I got everything, right? Okay. I got everything so far, I believe. So I think I think I might have a theory here, a game theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm going to actually, <clears throat> let me just check, make sure you didn't change your statement. Winter house fires are dire, open a window, clear smoke. Okay, well you changed your statement, so I'm not sure if I should press you or not, so let me just do that real quick. Um, did you change your statement from before? Well, yes, it was one of my most memorable birthdays, you see. I couldn't let it, okay. I'm sure the defendant will be delighted that you're using his trial to explore your past. And how is it that the memory related to this case, exactly? Hmm? Sorry. What's that? You have to speak up, I'm afraid. Never mind. He's a deaf as a post. Okay, but actually, this old man's at- Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I provide the alternate explanation I need to make point about something. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Cool, alright, just making sure, because- and then you're bothering me! <laughs> so the window was open. Very significant victory for the defense. I feel that the fog's starting to clear. Alternative explanation in this case are starting to show itself. Yes, okay, cool. Thank you. I want to go back to what I was doing. I'm going to try to pit you. Right. Well, he said he needed more. Let me just quickly do this. Okay. Uh, what is he, jury number three? Okay, so I don't really see how it changed my decision, really. Uh, only see if it gone all the way through the other side of the road. Okay. Hmm. Was it enough? It's gonna take... Okay. <clears throat> so, what is he asking for? He wants me to explain how it can go all the way to the side of the road? And how what can go all the way to the side of the road? The book? Hmm. Now she mentioned yes, the window was open, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so she's looking for a way a knife can appear to the other side of the... Uh, well, can a knife can appear in the back. I'm thinking there's a possibility that she... That fucking... What's her face? Miss Garadab could have thrown it. And I think I'm going to pick him. Juror number five against juror number two. Objection! Those two statements clearly have a deep, significant connection. Good grief. You mean they don't contradict each other? Explain, counsel, at once. Jury number two. Did you think, perhaps, that this could be one such novel alternative? Uh, alternative? Oh my, whatever do you mean? An alternative explanation as to how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you talking about? We demonstrated that the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, that was found at the scene of the crime, originated from Mr. Garadab's room on top of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other ob object besides the book could have found its way from the Garadab household to the street below. What's that now? After all, Miss Garadab could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Is that right, jury number four? What do you say you're waiting now, you little, you little beanpole? I'm beginning to think that, ever since the true origins of this book came to light, perhaps she had a feeling this might be what happened. Now you listen here, yo, you Eastner Gal, Gala, Galahad, Gal, Galat, uh, whatever. As the foreign, as foreign man of this jury, I demand, I demand a straight answer. You give us this yarn about some other object, making it way out of make it way out of the house, but what? What was it? I'm really taking a big gamble here. That was a bold assertion to make, but I haven't had any real evidence to back me up. But I'm certain that, at the very least, this warrants further investigation. All right, Mr. Foreman, I'll try to explain the defense's theory. The other object that was found that found its way from Mr. Garadab's household to the scene of the crime was the knife. Take that. 
Jury number four. Miss Gerda. What? What now? I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something else for this court. This knife. Have you ever seen this knife before? Uh, good lord, counsel! What on earth are you doing? That's the weapon! Shut up, George. Can't you see what I'm trying to do, you son of a bitch? That's the weapon that was lodged into the victim's back, man. <laughs> I love how he just came at it. Hold up. <laughs> I love how he stopped being all regal and shit, and he's like, Good lord, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> oh, man. Like, his whole demeanor changed for a moment. My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Miss and Mrs. Garretdeb were in the throes of an argument. Miss Garretdeb was hurling anything she could at her husband, who'd been backed up against the window. A window that had been open to clear the smoke and, and th uh, fuck, and through which the book sailed to land at the crime scene. You can't seriously believe the book was found in the victim's gri- I'm sorry. You can't seriously believe that- uh, that the book was found in the victim's grips. Right. Grip? Grasp? Grasp. Grasp. That's the word. Grasp. I'm sorry. Are you saying that it flew out of the window and across the street to land neatly in her hand? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying she saw it, went, oh my, what the fuck is this? Bent over to pick it up, probably, and then floop, a fucking knife just lodged back then there, and then she went, ugh, and tumbled like a fucking deck of cards. Hmm. Even my missus hasn't got an aim like that. Yes, I admit there are mere details we won't yet understand. But that, but that's the point. That's precisely why. We must not allow this trial to end. Not right now. Oh my. Yeah. Miss Garadeb, your answer, please. Have you seen this knife before or not? Oh, uh, um. Oh, shit. Oh. My lord. I wish to change my decision. I'm a woman of my word, after all. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I agree. I certainly did not see this coming. I just don't think it would be right for this trial to come to an end now with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman! I have to agree. Not that I think the granny did it, mind. Yes, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at the moment either. All together now, ladies, gents. We... we did it! Well, congratulations, Mr. Natahoda. So, as a result of the defiance some nation ex... Uh, some nation examination. A number of the jury's leaning has been changed. Two jurors called guilty against the now um, against four now calling innocent. Accordingly, the opinion of the court is divided, and this trial will continue. Jesus fuck! <laughs> Fucking Christ, man! Take off.